Um, from, a, from a ground perspective, if I'm yes. trying to exit a ship, combat or otherwise, expeditiously, right, on foot, mm -hmm. I do not want to have to climb up a ladder, grab my shit, climb down a ladder, yep, and then exit the ship. Welcome. Welcome back to episode two. This is Stuck in the Nail, the only podcast in the world talking about first person tactics and content and gameplay in the verse, the Star Citizen universe. Um, I'm Daft Hobbert. <laughs> Hobbert, excuse me. Hobbert. <laughs> Hobbert. I might change my name now. That sounds pretty cool. It's got a nice <laughs> ring to it. I'm Daft Hobbit, and with me, as always, I got Echo 5 Romeo. How you doing, Echo? Doing good. How about you, man? Doing great, sir. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> What'd you drink in there? Uh, I got a little bit of Jameson today. Um, mm, a staple. I've been force-fed this stuff for seven years, you know? So yes, my liver's used to it. Yes. It's like when uh, Moses was lost in the wilderness and they had manna. Like, that's kind of what Jameson is in the alcohol. It was when I was lost in the Marine Corps and I had teammates. <laughs> and they're like, they here, this, fed Jameson. this shit yeah, falls yeah. from the sky. Eat it. Drink it. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What do you got? What do you got? In the, uh, the I got some High room? West uh, Distillery okay. or some High West whiskey for out of Park City. Ooh, Turn nice. the label there. I don't know. No. We, we just want sponsors, really, is what we're looking for. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Sponsored, not sponsored. I'm working on a local beer company. Oh, ah, okay, dude, that'd be sick. Yeah. I love local brews. Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, we should maybe do another podcast about alcohol. <laughs> 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 anyway, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, we are on Spotify. Uh, we're on every single platform right now. It's going to take a few more days to get Apple because bureaucracy. Um, they got to vet us out and make sure we're not crazy. Too late. So yeah, we're we're on every platform, man. We're on YouTube. That's more of just like a little, you know, complimentary mint on the pillow. Like, hey, here's us. Here's our faces. And what do you what do we got in mind for the YouTube channel? Echo? Like what? Well, I, let's let's be absolutely clear. The Internet already corrected us. Day one, episode one. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not a fucking podcast if it's on YouTube. Yeah, so. if it's just on YouTube. Right. Yeah. I Yeah. I, I don't know what this is. It's just two dudes. Two talk. dudes. I, yeah. Whatever. Two whatever. dudes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we got to put. Sorry. I, I'm getting <laughs> off track. We got a bunch of stuff planned, uh, you know, tactics overviews, like going through stuff. I've actually been messing around with some stuff in Illustrator um, and like kind of drawing out the different floors of some of the larger ships. Yep. Maybe we do like a, you know, um, like an NFL broadcast type, you know. Yeah, we're going to review <laughs> clips and You're shit. You're going to go here and then boom, uh, the boom. X's and the O's, yeah. you know. Bam, right down the middle. Of... Boom. Yeah. Uh, RIP, by the way. Yeah. Um... RIP. <laughs> But yeah, so other just some more visual stuff for the YouTube uh, side of the house. But the, the, I think I think you said it the best, like the, the podcast is going to be just audio, just us talking either theory or talking mm -hmm. through different points of FPS gameplay tactics, things like that. Yep. All this stuff you could take from the podcast and like go and take it or like write it down and use in your org. And exactly. Should, you know. Yeah. So work. so stay tuned. Lots of, the YouTube channel is going to have a lot more visual, obviously, <laughs> but yep. uh, yeah, we're, we're going to keep the podcast true, true to form. So yeah, if you look, you're interested, check us out, uh, www.brandersprivateers.com. Look us up, Branders Privateers on YouTube. That's our organization. That's where we're going to be posting most of the content. And then always you can look up Stuck in the Nail uh, on any podcast medium and you can find us there. Um, so I guess we're going to dive into it. We have... We have a little little bit of controversy to talk about today. Ooh. You know, anytime you talk about anything that kind of challenges people's opinions about Star Citizen, right, it's always controversial. But we're, we're going to do it very professionally. We don't want to be perceived as haters of the game and stuff, so we'll get into that. Um, but, yeah, let's talk a little bit about logistics. That's what, That was the first topic. Uh, well, actually, before we do that, am I missing anything? I feel like I'm missing something. Uh. No, no, we're good. <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. We're All good. right, we're good. Well, with uh, three point one five and inventory, mm -hmm. uh, logistics. How important 
is it is logistics like let's 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 bring it into the real world echo you're a grunt you were in afghanistan how important are logistics uh well it's a different yeah i mean uh i i don't even know how to answer that question because i feel like it's such a, a common sense que- like it's super important it's everything it's just as important like y- y- you don't have bullets you can't shoot people right like you <laughs> yeah. can't do combat yeah and if you don't have so a it's super important if you don't have a full belly well, you don't need a full belly, but if you don't have some food, then you won't muster yeah, the over, energy to shoot. Right. Yes. So, or, so water. logistics are like, man, logistics is so deep. You're talking base to base. You're talking fob to base. You're talking conus to oconus, like moving troops. Like that's part logistics. Like logistics is a huge portion of military combat, right? Right. Or, or just combat in general. Would you say? Uh, would you say that logistics is what made the United States a superpower? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it attributed to uh, the the power, mil- military power of mm. the U.S., right? Like to be able to move troops and gear and equipment and vehicles within 24 hours, respond to anything in 24 hours, right. anywhere in the world. I mean, yeah, yeah it's a pretty big deal. It's impressive stuff. So I, I might be kind of guiding the conversation a little too much, but yeah, uh, but yeah. There's there's many there's there's a few superpowers in the world, and uh, no matter what your political leanings are, it all comes down to logistics. I think, in my opinion, how fast can we move troops from A to B, right? And uh, I summed it up here. What did I write it there? Yeah. So being in the right place at the right time with the right equipment, mm-hmm. like that's basically that's my personal definition of warfare. I've shared that with you before. But mm-hmm. like that's basically it, right? Just be. Yeah, I mean, play. and that, yeah, that transfers transfers on multiple levels, right? Like all mm-hmm. the way from, you know, the operations level or, or strategic level down to your tactical <clears throat> levels too, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. Sorry, I almost choked on whiskey there. <clears throat> um, but yeah, all levels of it, right? It's, if you are in the right. wrong place, you can't engage the enemy. You can't do your mission. Um, if you don't have the right equipment, uh doesn't matter and you can be in the right place with the right equipment but if it's the wrong timing you're out of luck (laughs) right yeah so when it comes to star citizen then um you can maybe you can elaborate to how have we like how does one how do you do that as a group in within the scope of star citizen yeah i think that's something we're still trying to figure out right and i think there's orgs out there that probably do it way better than i think you and i have discussed to do it but Uh um yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know, right? So you look at you look at the inventory system right now. You have your local, you have ship inventory that's only available to you, hmm. uh, even though the capacity of the ship is available to everyone. But you just can't see what everyone else is putting in the ships. Um, we right. don't have the ability to like. I guess you could argue that there is some physicalized portions of inventory. So you can put weapons on weapon racks. You can store boxes of gear, you know, physically within the ship, but it's just, it's not organized and it's tough to, it is to do. So we're in a little bit of a weird place with that, but I I like where it's going, right? Like I, I'm, as I talk, I now I got to say something nice about it. I mean, I don't have to, I want to, and that's, you know, the fact that we have this now, right? So yes. now when you go out, and I've done this plenty of times at 3.15, where I left the, the station that I'm at, and I'm like, damn it, I just bought this med gun, and I forgot to put it on my ship. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a new way of thinking about Star Citizen, and I very much enjoy that, that meticulous detail um, that we have to think about, which, which yeah. to me, as an org, you know, met owner, like... That just means I need to find somebody who's passionate about moving gear from point A to point B, right? Right, and that's why your your alliances uh, with people who who enjoy that type of gameplay are very important. Um, yeah, like uh, we all, those of us that know Gray Seer, I'll shout him out. He's in the org, but he he's that guy for us, sure. uh, and a few others. But uh, I'm excited to see what we can do as far as logistics. But it is a little bit limiting right now, like you said, tier zero of inventory, right? And I don't know how many times it's already happened to me. I've, I've bought something at a station and then just booked it. 
And I'm like, yeah, to do. Yeah. And then I get to the other station. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> we have figured out some pretty cool workarounds, which I think most people yeah. are probably onto at this point now, you know, stuff and food and water and magazines in a backpack, you know, the small, these small items that you don't necessarily want to put on the deck of your ship. Um, you know, they can be put in a pack and that pack can be laid on the ground. Actually, mm-hmm. that's a, a, it, it almost feels like um, the supply box from Battlefield. Uh, I knocked at it to me the other day. Yeah, they he just like, here you go. Down. Here's some ammo. And he threw the box. He threw the pack yeah. on the ground. I was like, oh, this is this is just like Battlefield. It is. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Yeah. And uh, we'll have to post a picture. I'll put it in in post here when I'm talking about it for those visual. But um, basically, you can you can have a fully outfitted character with a backpack on mm-hmm. your back, two rifles on the side of that backpack, uh, and even more rifles on your back if you want. And then you can actually place a backpack in your hands. <laughs> you have to fill it first. So put it on your back first, fill it with what you want, put it back in your inventory. Gosh, I always hit that mic thing. Put it back in your inventory. Uh, and then you can place it in your hands. And so it, it literally looks like a grunt. You know, like when you're uh, you're going on a deployment or you're moving somewhere, you got all your shit on your back <laughs> yeah. and you're running off to the tarmac with a, a military sea bag, sometimes two. Uh, mm-hmm. a weapon and like or body work. armor, every, like, and you got a big main pack on your back and you're just jogging, sweating your ass off. Dude, I swear some of the hardest moments of the, of your military career are on that tarmac while you're running out to a plane with all of your gear, but you can essentially do that in star citizen. Uh, we call them respawn packs. So that's a logistic thing we've been working on is we are limited because we're tier zero. So if you're, Needing some ideas, this is where you lend an ear to this for your group or for your however you play. Uh, you can stage packs inside of a ship. You can stage armor. Like, it's it's loose about the ship. It can be moved and bumped. It's And if someone leaves the ship, it might despawn. There's, you know, all, all, the, all the traditional jankiness of Star Citizen uh, is there. Oh, it looks like we lost your camera there, Echo. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's... Uh, Excellent. Good to have you back. <laughs> it's interesting because it's like you, you can actually physicalize it now. I wish we could just share the inventory. Like if you put something in, in the spaceship, like I want to be mm-hmm. able to access that. That will. I think that's going to come. It doesn't make sense for them not to do that. But yeah, yeah. So we. I'll I'll post the. You'll see the picture up while I'm talking about this. But you basically are holding a pack in your hands with two rifles on it. You stage that next to wherever you're going to spawn. I think it's the Carrick is where most people are going to be planning on spawning. It's like kind of the only ship that has a tier one bed right now um, with decent weaponry. I guess you could do an 890 jump if you want to, you know, travel in style. But uh, that's another way. Yeah, or you could have a, a, a process set up as once you come out of the med bay, if you're not under attack, right? Like um, come down to the cargo bay, pick up your gear. Yep. Don, don it and then go on about your business. Exactly. And I do have a video I'll post on the YouTube channel. It was uh, 50 seconds for me getting out of the bed, waiting for all those animations to end, walking out of the Carrick Med Bay, seeing a pack with a, a little stack of armor, because some of that armor, we wear heavy armor, obviously, and it won't fit inside of a backpack. So anyway, it's all staged there, ready to go. You have like a quartermaster do it, however you want to do it. And within 50 seconds, you can have a full combat kit again, applied and attached to your body, and you're ready to go again, which is huge. So I guess yeah. that's another part of logistics is respawning, right? How do you get the people to the to back into the fight? Is a huge yeah, part. sure, right? The drop ships, we could, I could go for, but there could, could probably be two episodes on drop ships. <laughs> Dude, in fact, I think I think it's safe to say we're going to be talking about logistics from a first person standpoint a lot. The yeah. equipment you carry, what decisions go into it, what new equipment comes out, you know, and how that's yep. going to affect gameplay. And do you take it? Do you not? Maybe we maybe mm-hmm. we even have a segment. Take it or leave it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So if you like it, you can take it. If not, send it right back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no refunds. No refunds. Uh-uh. So, yeah. And then uh, right here with the refunds. And then you have item selection, too. Like, what do you take? with the chance of it being lost. And uh, I wish we had some more tools for orgs or groups being able to fund the equipment needed for gameplay, uh, like an org bank, financial. So I think that's part of logistics too. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that's 
So I would consider that maybe more financials, but maybe that does fall under. Yeah, I guess that does fall under the logistics umbrella, right? Like having the money. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of workarounds. I know some people just kind of send all their money to one individual, but uh, much in the way that we, I would love to have one access to the entirety of a ship's inventory, no matter who put it in the inventory. Um, I'd also love a place for uh, the orgs to the org members to go. Um, right. Like even like persistent hangers, just yeah. allow my org members in mm-hmm. that place. You know, that, you know, that's, um, a, that's a really good point. Um, yeah. Logistics are usually, there's a lot of preparation and that falls in logistics. Like we kind of right. touched on it last episode. Um, how we were talking about some of the teams we've been in, and ev- everybody kind of knew how we all prepped our gear, how we liked certain things in our mm-hmm. gear, on our gear. Um, and we can't get that that detailed about it in a video game, but Star Citizen allows a lot of you know deep dives into it. So if we did have a place to prep, that's a huge part of any combat is the preparation that goes into it prior. If you're prepared, mm-hmm. if you have a plan, if you understand and you have the right equipment at the right place at the right time, you're gonna you're gonna win, or your your chances of winning go up dramatically. So right. having a place, a ready room, like you as a as a force recon marine, how how much how many hours do you think you've logged <laughs> logged in real life? Uh, how how many hours have you spent in an actual ready room? Oh, uh, dude uh like at battalion i mean technically we don't have ready rooms we just have company areas uh force has ready rooms i suppose marsoc has more team rooms than anything else although yep. i would have loved the team room uh like, i mean the company area right logistically just mm-hmm. trying to figure out what's going where and then heading down to the armory to making sure you know that that gear is issued out correctly you know everybody got has what they need um you know guys that want to take extra gear like the long you know our snipers or whatever want to take an extra rifle or a different type of configuration of a rifle or whatever yeah um yeah i mean you spend i mean just for a field exercise it's probably a week prior that you're sort of prepping men weapon and equipment you know um to go out to a field op for a week and then overseas like yeah i mean you're spending probably a maybe like at minimum four days in a, in a team room, right? Like a, like a, um, I can't remember what they're called, but basically a, like an ISO container um, and planning from that, from an isolation facility for at least four or five days. Right. And that's yeah. le- that also the mission planning, but also logistics. Like you're on and off the phone with the air force, you're on and off the phone with, you know, Marine Corps supply, you're on and off the phone with all these other people like, yo, I need all this shit. Yeah. Can you prep it? You're setting up, you know, uh, le- like flights in and out, like, and you're talking to the pilots, the pilots are coming in and out. So like, there's a, there's a ton of time spent in a, in an ISO capacity, yeah. like an isolation capacity sort of right. And, and, and it's an isolation so that information doesn't leak and people only mm. need to know what they need to know, that kind of stuff. So yeah. Operational security. Right. That, that, that's, it's not a one for one transfer, but that's another thing we could talk about too, is how to keep your plans hidden. (laughs) Um, Sure. You know, uh, Eve online is a great example of that. We've all heard the stories of infiltration and subterfuge and James Bond 007 stuff going on, stealing all these in-game assets right under people's noses. And that's that's eventually end game. That's going to be available in star citizen. So Mm, yeah, yeah like an, an isolation containment for just strictly operational security. That's that's some intense stuff. And a lot of people, like you said, it's over glamour. It's it's very glamorized being in those sure. positions in the military. But like that's so many days and hours of workup just for like a simple reconnaissance patrol, right? Yeah. Like you'd, yeah, all that prep work. So that's what we're getting at now. I think it's a unique opportunity that we have as, as star citizen backers to, to, uh, to dive into that. And like, it doesn't have to be that extreme, obviously, but you know, I'm sure some people have gone around. I know, I know a few of our guys have gone around to different space station and have staged gear throughout the verse. And, uh, it's, that's great. Yeah. Cache locations. Like mm-hmm. that's a huge, uh, that's a, I mean, that's a contingency within a real life operations order. Like, yep. What happens if you lose all your shit? 
Right. Right. It's highly unlikely it's going to happen. But what happens? You know, what What do you do if you do lose? What if you have to, you know, evade and escape and evade? Like, yeah, you need like, out of there. You got to drop all your kit and run. Well, yeah. you go to the cast point, rearm and, you know, now you're in fucking defend mode. Right. Instead of offense. But at least you have something to defend yourself with. Right. So yeah. cash eight points are huge in any plan. Yeah. Stashing uh, weapons. Anything you can anywhere in the game is definitely doable. It just has to be able to persist. And I think right. currently the servers won't allow it, especially with IAE. You know, we've been running into that all week. Oh, yeah. I meant more at space stations, right? Like having, oh, yeah. you know, some stuff stage at Heral 5 or yeah. Nick L1 or, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I was I was taking it a step further. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't. I, 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 I started thinking about it without voicing it. But <laughs> so you got that av- aspect of it. But what if uh, here's a scenario? We all saw the video at Citizen Con where they land on that new planet in Pyro, uh, and they showed like three or four ways you could go and you know infiltrate and get that relic. Right, one they bought it. They just went straight to the counter and they're like, "Give me that relic," like as a pawn shop. Right. And uh, then they did a sneaky one, and then like a guns blazing one. So imagine. What if you didn't have that option? What if you had to be sneaky? Or what if you were prepping for a guns blazing? And you, you know, like a stealth night patrol in, stage your equipment in a backpack because hopefully that equipment will persist if you hide it between some rocks. Mm. And then you put on some civilian clothes, do, 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 walk in, blend in with the local populace, get a little closer look. Like, a lot of reconnaissance teams, depending on where you're at in the, in, in the mission, right? I know that is mm-hmm. a tactic where you bring some civilian clothes, yeah. walk around. Oh, yeah, over reconnaissance. Yeah. There's some over- I mean, I've been in a man dress. You yeah. Know? Like, I've walked around uh, in, in a town <laughs> with a man dress on, like, mm-hmm. doing – it's 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 sketchy as fuck. Yeah. But it's, it's pretty fucking cool to do. But, yeah, you're just – you're blending in with the local populace and, mm-hmm. and trying to, to Plain gather sight. information. Yeah, yeah you have a uh, cover uh, for action usually depending on what you're doing. And that's just yep. blending in with the populace can be that. Yeah, and that, that's more up my alley. Uh, I was in the infantry for a while, but got to work with some contract dudes and things, and I'll just leave it at that. But I, I did a lot of plain clothes work, and that's a very, very common tactic where you'll have something stashed. You'll have a fallback point. You'll have a safe house. You'll have, you name it, but you'll have something mm-hmm. to fall back to with all the goodies that you need for evasion and escape. That's so mm-hmm. crucial. So that's one way you can infiltrate in, stash your gear, blend in, come back, you know, and you have this little little hide out there. You know, you've you've probably set up dozens of hides. Um I I they were different for me cuz we were usually in urban, but it's uh sure. it's all the same concept. Yeah, right? and it, yeah. the concept's the same cuz I've done urban and and uh rural hides as well. But like, yeah, it's the same concept mm-hmm. for sure. A little safe. You know, how do I disguise myself with the camouflage of a city building, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you this: you can uh, with a with a you know an orange vest and a clipboard and a hard hat, you can really get anywhere you you want. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny how many people just won't won't question anything if they see it. It's just a form of authority, you know. Yep. So, uh, but I hope to do that in the game. Like, wouldn't that be that be sweet? Like, just to get some intel on a place, just to scope it out, I, map it out. I would love that level of detail. I really would. Yeah. Um, I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> I mean, if, if we can put a backpack down on the ground and have friends access it, we just need it to be persistent, and we could essentially stage ammo caches before an ambush, before an attack, or fallback points. You know, we uh, well, this is what we'll be talking about in, in the future is um, the actual elements of, like, a patrol and elements of an attack using military terminology to describe it because that's all we know from Echo and I's background. But, like, what's a limit of advance? You know, what's... What's a you know, what's a casualty collection point? What is what are these things that you can actually use in Star Citizen? These one for ones, and that's actually perfect segue. Like, what is a one for one tactic that you can use? Um, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Echo one for uh, one formations, formations, for patrolling formations, right? Hell uh, yeah. So the, there are multiple different types of formations, um, and. Honestly, I, I mean, in my Marine Corps career, I've used I've, I've actually used probably all of them in a real world scenario. Uh, but most guys won't ever use them all like dudes that oh, are yeah. in like Fallujah. They probably just use the column, right? Like or, or a Ranger file. I have 90 percent of the time. You're probably going to use a Ranger file. But yeah, what you just do whatever's the easiest usually. But uh, like yeah. what about an echelon left or right? Have you ever used those? 
Yeah. So uh, actually, I have. Yes, we were we were doing uh, HLZ rep, and we used the echelon to uh, so sort of try to stay as close to the edge of this of this uh, green zone uh, for the cover and the concealment. Uh, but we had to get out in this area and sort of mark and walk this LZ to make sure, or this area to make sure it was good LZ. So, yeah, I mean, I've used. Um, I've used them all and they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, formations for one, hundred percent, right? Like um, the other, it, the other uh, tactic that's one for one is small unit leadership. 100%. That's a one for one. Like Absolutely. if you, if you have a military simulated org right now and you do not have small unit leadership at the tactical level and they don't know what they're doing, you're doing, your, your yourself and your and your org a service like yeah understanding how small unit leadership can sort of guide and and uh, uh uh what's the word i'm looking for orchestrate sort of these movements is is really elegant and it's it's absolutely a one-for-one transfer like i have done stuff with other orgs and it was like ripped right out of what I do now and it's contracting, right? Like I contract for the military now. So like in, in the training sector. So I rip like a lot of my training programs directly out of that and they transfer into, um, you know, the movements and the, and the small unit leadership yeah. training all transfer into star citizen. So it's awesome. And yeah, cause those are all, um, they're not as tangible. Like, I, I don't know if that's the word, but I think, you know what I mean? They're universal. It's it's all part of communication and knowing and understanding your role. Right. Like, so any tactic that has those two those two things is communicating with others and understanding your role in a team. Almost any tactic that the military would employ that, you know, if those two are the pillars holding up that tactic, then it, it does transfer over into almost every video game. You know, yeah. if you're playing Call of Duty or you're playing Halo or... Really, it yeah, does. Yeah, you're playing, yeah. you know... Mario Kart, I don't know. Like that it could probably work somehow. So like if you took four if you took your four man squad in Battlefield 2042, put them in a wedge from uh, one point to another in a large open area, you are most likely going to kill everyone on your way from that point to the other point. Um because you just have a greater line of sight, you have better mm-hmm. firepower in all directions like there are yes, they are absolutely applicable, but nobody you wants to use them. Because they just want to hold the shift key and yeah, and run you know, knife fifty dudes and then mm. and sometimes that's the right answer in a video game because it yeah I mean and it, yeah. it's not always real life but it it is a one for one transfer of formation but what makes it work in a video game is the discipline of each player being able to not like I don't know have you ever seen a group of kids play soccer like a little like five six seven year olds my my nephew plays soccer and I went to his game like a year ago. And the ball moves over, they kick it, boink, and this herd of kids yeah. just brrr, run over here, <laughs> boom, moves it, and they yeah. kick it back. Brrr. So, like, that's what happens in video games. You know, you hear gunshots, but, 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 everybody wants a piece of that. They want to, they want to put hits on them. They want to, oh, he's one shot, he's one shot. Everybody turns their attention. You know, so that's just how gamers work. They, that's how right. you play Call of Duty. Like, it's, it's an arcade shooter. But in a mill yeah. sim, you move slower, the consequences are greater. You need teammates and they have to have that discipline. Like if I have to trust echo, um, fill in the blank, put your own org mates name in here. I have to trust echo that if I have the left flank, he's got the right flank. If I, if I button hook through a doorway, you know, he's going to go opposite, right? He's, you have to trust your teammates to do that. And for those tactics to work, that's why I think a lot of them, a lot of people don't understand that, that concept. They don't. Yeah. So they having the discipline to be able to to not look at something and I struggle with it in video oh, yeah. games just because, uh, you know, again, video games are m- like a di- at a different pace than real in real life. If somebody points out a contact and it's not in the direction I'm looking, I don't fucking look yeah. right unless I'm hey echo. I need you to shoot this guy. OK, well, then I'll look right. But if I'm told to look north and they call contact west, I'm looking north. You know what yeah. I mean? But in a video game that like, you're right. Everybody wants a piece of that action. Everybody wants to be, you know, yeah. I was going to say John Basilon, but nobody knows who the, who the fuck that is. Yeah. But uh, every, yeah, <laughs> you know, everybody wants to be soap, you know, private soap. They want to be soap. Soap. 
bro, yeah. soap or whatever, right? Like, uh, but if you <laughs> if you can be that disciplined dude, right? Like, if if you're if you're in your org, if you're told like, yo, watch the right, yes, and you don't you don't turn from the right unless you hear your name. That's the the level of discipline you sort of need, I think, to be effective exactly. in something like Arma or Star Citizen. Totally, dude. Because what's very likely to happen is you're in this this player universe. It's a it's a sandbox game. Anything can happen mm-hmm. from any time. You can come from any angle, right? So if you have if you have something on the ground, or if you have something you need to protect, or assault, or whatever, can you do you ask yourself this question if you're listening? Do you have the discipline? to watch a doorway for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Like what does your play session entail? So a right. huge part of this teamwork level that we've achieved in star citizen, like we mentioned it in the last podcast, I sat at a comma for 45 minutes mm-hmm. just to support my team who was doing all the action, right? Echo sat inside of a bunker one time for like an hour while I was on the outer cordon outside, getting all the kills, shooting everybody before they got yep. into the bunker. And like, you know, we could have saved some for you, <laughs> but we didn't. And you you just did your job, right? Yeah. I did my job too. Did The question is, did you still have fun? Are you the type of gamer oh, that I, could do that and have fun? Yeah, right. And, and that's really the question you need to ask yourself. Break out of the mold of Battlefield and Call of Duty and start thinking about your time an FPS and Star Citizen that way, right? Because right now in 3.15, you may not have to, right? Like I even catch myself running into a bunker without a gun, not looking around. But what's to say CIG doesn't just start randomly placing bots, you know, AI outside? Mm-hmm. Well, now, now it's a whole different game. Now you have to be, we know they're inside right now. But yes. if they start placing one, two, five guys outside, like, and they just randomly pop up from any mm. direction and you all are just sprinting without your gun towards the front door. Cause you think that's where everybody's at. I mean, yes, you know, you're going to lose guys more often than, than, than not. But if you walk up in a wedge, right. Or even a file, everybody's guns out and everybody has mm. a, just a, you know, a prescribed direction to look well, Oh shit. Contact left. You know, yeah, now absolutely. everybody who has left as their prescription can fire while the guys on the right take a knee and they're, providing rear security for guys on the left because a dude might pop up from the right. So it's, mm-hmm. you know. Dude, we had a perfect scenario pop up last night. We were clearing a bunker. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to Exidor. He's one of our fly boys. He's with the Mighty 8th. And he throws on some heavy armor and just goes and rolls with us. And he does great. He, he had excellent flow. I think I might poach him from Sufi. If you're listening, Sufi, I'm going to poach him maybe. <laughs> No, I won't. But uh, yeah, he he knows he wants to be with the mighty eighth. He's awesome. But we uh, we took a casualty. Chankov went down. Chankov's one of the best Star Citizen players I know. You'll well, we might even have him on this podcast. I hope. Yeah. Um, he just knows everything about the game, and he's a cool guy. So he's on point, and he gets you know NPC just desync whatever, just smoked him, <laughs> and we all watch him go down. But we we just kept the flow up. But we had a little bit of a hesitation. And Exodor, not to, to harp on you, Exodor, but he, he he should have pushed past and picked up work. That's a term we're going to use a lot, right? When, when, when Echo or I or someone is going to pick up the left flank, that's called finding work. So if you hear us referring that in the podcast, when you're finding work, that's a real-life term that a lot of teams use in, you know, whether it's traditional warfare or close quarters combat or whatever. So finding work. So the second man in that formation, which was, you know, just a, a file while going down the line, should have pushed past the casualty and and continued the fight to help save his buddy. But Exodor stopped to do medical aid. And so we had to kind of little, you know, I pick up that slack. And it wasn't, you know, a completely dire situation. It was like three or four of us in a bunker. But that's a good habit to instill in people. You know, you have someone go down, push past him, and keep your guns up. That's find the work. Now you have one down man down. You need to pick up more work to cover him, right? And that's a concept we hope to instill in everybody as we talk about this. So uh, we talked about it, and, and Exeter was like, that makes perfect sense. So whatever the situation is, you need to be aware of where... Where's the threat coming from? Where can I put my gun? I'm not going to go right. aim at a corner. 
right? Why, what, what good does that do? So I need to find a, a doorway, a spawn point, uh, a hallway, an elevator, uh, a, a, you know, a primary direction. Wherever you think fire. you could come from, that's where somebody could come from. Exactly. And, that, and whatever you think is the most likely avenue of approach, like mm -hmm. what – what would I, what's the most likely thing I would do is the right thing to sort of sit there and, and secure. Yeah. And since we're talking about one for one tactics, uh, we'll probably have to do this every episode because there are so many that translate and there are also a lot that don't. So we'll have yeah. to, we'll talk about those, but let's, let's talk about MP COA or uh, MD COA, right? Enemy's most yeah. dangerous course of action. And then MP COA is enemy's most probable course of action. Mm -hmm. So uh, also, if if you are, um, sorry. Let me let me backtrack here. If you're hearing acronyms from us that you don't understand, just put them in the comments, and we'll do a better job yeah. of explaining them because we want to bring the community up to speed with some good terminology that will help you. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, MP Co. What do you think, Echo? Uh, well, okay. I mean, that's a deep subject, right? <laughs> uh, so, if you're red selling or white selling. Right. Or you're planning a mission like uh, it's well, explain MPCO that what's red MP... selling and white selling. So red selling is is the act of putting yourself in your opponent's shoes and planning the mission. Right. Mm -hmm. So so. It's a what if scenario. It's not. So, yes, what if what it if, is what on if. its most basic level, a what if scenario like. Right. So typically when we would plan missions, we would have a red hat and a, and a white hat. Right. And so the red hat, his total job is to sit there and listen to our plan and go, well, I'm going to do this. Right. And it goes, Oh, all right. Well, that created a point of contention for us. How do we defeat that? He's right? like the devil's uh, same with the white hat. The white hat is sitting there as a civilian asset and going, well, I'm just running around naked screaming for my life. And it's like, okay, well, how do we handle this civilian populace? Right. Like, and so, uh, but on its more deeper level, it's, it's dedicating someone or a group of people to say, okay, you understand Brander's Privateers as an organization, who they are, everything that you can read from them forward facing, their capabilities, their, their size and location, all that stuff. Um, now I need you to plan the mission from their eyes, right? What you know about Brander's, I need you to plan from that position, as if you were a Brander's Privateer, right? Like do that. And uh, so you come up with these missions and you sort of play your mission against their mission, right? And see where your mission fails, right? And so that's what Red Hat is. So I digress like hardcore there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, M so MPCO and M MDCOA are important and they're so scalable. These two terms, again, they scale from the f all through all four levels of, of, of warfare and that's strategic. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> We're going so deep I'm, here. I love it. Yeah, so so deep. But there's strategic, operational, and and uh, tactical are the three that I mostly worry about. But anyways, um, and and so it's understanding what what is the most dangerous situation that our enemy could present, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then what is the most probable? So when you're looking at it in terms of like sequentially most dangerous is the one that you want to sort of try to defeat right and then most yes. probable is just well if they don't do most dangerous what's another option they can do so you may have um one most dangerous and 15 most probables right and that may factor into your plan mm -hmm. of okay well what if they bring ballistas right yeah uh, what if they have air security right, right. it can be well it can be that big or it can be as small as what if he pops that corner? Right. What if he, what if they push now? Like what if, what if he has a machine gun over a yeah. rifle? What if he's using ballistics over laser, right? Yeah. Like what if they all use a that civilian stuff plays hostage? into it, everything? <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. Interrupt you. No, no, it's, I mean, it's yeah. a deep subject. Like, and I, and again, I'm sure MP Koa mm -hmm. could have its own episode as well as MD Koa, right? Exactly. And um, those of you who are listening and following along, like, let us know, are, are we just absolutely crazy for, for, like, talking about this? You know, yesterday, or not yesterday, uh, the last episode we did, I opened the episode and said, hey, we're Star Citizen Fanatics. And then I was like, uh, maybe that's not the right word. But here we are doing a podcast about these tiny details in Star Citizen. So maybe we are fanatic <laughs> in, in some way. I think we're more obsessed with these tactics uh, because it was our professions at one point, right? Um, yeah. 
but yeah, there's such a tiny, so let us know if this is helpful to you. Like give us some feedback. Um, Mm -hmm. because a lot of this is one for one. We want to help educate. We want to help give you something useful. And if it's not useful, at least at minimum, it's, it's entertaining here. So, uh, MP Koa and MD Koa, we'll have to deep dive into that for sure. But, uh, but the, the point is, is that yeah. if, if you take anything away from that segment, right, like use MD Koa most dangerous, what is the most dangerous thing my enemy could do to me? And then also plan for most probable. What, right. what, what also could they possibly do? And add that into your planning when you're going against another org, right? Like use that in your org planning. Uh, don't just say, well, yeah. let's use the Prowler because it's the coolest, stealthiest ship. Well, <laughs> most dangerous is you're bringing troops in on a dedicated drop ship. And the, so the most dangerous course of action there is that they're going to target your drop ships. Right. So how do you defeat that? Right. Yeah. And that's and that's what planning is. That I mean, that's all military planning is, yeah. is going well. And that's what a, a red problem. hat, a red hat or red cell would do and say, if I was an Eclipse bomber pilot protecting this area right. and I saw a prowler pop up on my scan, put yourself in that shoes. If you're listening to this, you're defending an area. You're you're an, an, an Eclipse stealth bomber with a what size nine torpedo, as I like to call them. I call them yeets. OK, <laughs> size nine yeets, baby. And you you see a prowler pop on your radar and you got a yeet in the chamber. What are you going to do? What's the most dangerous course of action that you could take on that prowler? You're going to shoot that bitch out of the sky. That's a juicy target, because what is a prowler for, Echo? Unfortunately, dropping troops off on the battlefield. I know, right? <laughs> It's Did dedicated. <laughs> Sorry. Sanguine, en- sanguine enough on that one? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We may or may not be talking from experience in an org v. org PvP. Right. So that's another thing. It's like, whoa, what's meta? What's cool? What's new? Yeah. Is that always the answer for a tactical solution? And maybe that's the bridge here, right? So what is meta right now? How do we defeat meta? Sure. Right. And, and that's that's what you're. And if you think that meta can't be defeated. Uh, oh, stand by. <laughs> I'll hold that place for you. If you think that meta can't be defeated. There we go. <laughs> so if you think that meta can't be defeated, it, it absolutely can. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it just takes a little bit of brain power to sort of think through those problems and understand. um you know, and to me, that's what's most fun about Star Citizen is analyzing the meta, analyzing what I think orgs are going to do, um, and then trying to defeat those those the, those probabilities, right? Um, yeah. That's, I think you asked me in episode one why I play Star Citizen. That's the end game for me, right, is, is mm. these large organ, organizational battles and trying to understand their side of the war or their combat or the tick or whatever, and then trying to understand, guess what they're going to do and then defeat that. Right. Yes. And uh, that's beautiful. Cause I couldn't agree more with you. That's a huge reason why I play this game or am I, I'm hopeful that it will develop in the way that it's been presented. Uh, right. It can it's, it is and has been subject to change. It always will be, but Yes, 100%. Yes, yeah. that's what I want from this game as well, is that dynamic, that emergent gameplay where there is a meta maybe. So here's an example. Um, the meta, not so much meta, but a, a, a confine of the game. We were talking last episode about an airlock, right? If you watch that video that we posted in the description, go back and check it out if you haven't. Um, you can see how big of a choke point an airlock is. That was something that we had to overcome and prep for. Uh, and it worked out, and but, you know, it worked out really well. And it what it what it took was us analyzing what an airlock is, looking mm-hmm. at all the aspects of an airlock. It's you know, some people might not even realize that if you look at an airlock, the little marker on the door changes colors. It does. Like if you sit it's there an and indicator. watch it, it'll actually change colors. Not a, not to mention it, there's a sign above it. Um, and then going to try and and then down to the the, the second of like when yes. does that door open, <laughs> right? Like. So I knew when to pull my finger off my middle mouse button and lay it on top of my left mouse button at three, three and a half seconds. I was, I was moving my finger 
Because yeah. at four, I was going full blast. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you asked any of our guys in that operation, this is the same thing we would instill in our Marines and our teammates and other jobs that we've done. We would drill them and qu- quiz them on parts of the mission that pertain to them. Okay. Yeah. If we asked any of our guys, how long does it take for an airlock to cycle? They would say four one thousand. One yep. one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand. That exact cadence could change later if they speed up airlocks. Who knows? But that exact change or a cadence is the exact time an airlock will open. And why do we know that? Yep. Because we've tested it a thousand times. And that's right. something we briefed our guys on, and we'd quiz them. How long does it take for that airlock to cycle? Four seconds. Four one thousand. Cool. All right. And, and then, I can't speak for everybody else, but in that moment while we were training on that airlock, that particular airlock. You know, we were all saying it out out loud, like yes. all of us in the airlock were saying it out loud. And it just got to the point where like, OK, we don't have to say it out loud anymore because we know when we hear standby cycling on the sea of cycling, everyone is starting to count one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. And then, at, you yeah. know, four one thousand, the door opens and all six guns were going off at the same time, you know. so Yes. And when we'd also studied like, you know, there's a lot of modularity in in the buildings in a video game especially in a space like even if we like if we went into the future a thousand years if you're going to colonize space it's going to be modular because it's easy it's effective you know you can transport them and that's what they're going to give us more of in the game and so it's understanding how a bunker is laid out the segments that they use to build it uh, so that particular bunker, we knew exactly where to be aiming through that airlock. So that was all preparation of it, and mm-hmm. it was beautiful. Yep. Um, but yeah, that yeah. That's and that's one. that's something that's not a one for one transfer. Like in real life, we don't have the answers. Yeah. I mean, you might have if you're doing something in a well established city, you might have like you know uh, architectural design yeah. and blueprints so you can pull and get an idea of what the room is. But you, again, you still don't know what's in the room at the time, right? right. Like couches, tables, flipped over. <laughs> Yeah. walls or whatever right Dogs. chalkboards pulled off and used as cover or concealment that just all i mean anything you got to play the so what if game cool. yeah it's so random <clears throat> um so that's that's something you're right it's not a one for one um but in star citizen it, we went i mean we went to the exact facility we spent uh, four days i think just stacking on the airlock loading in the airlock yeah i think that was like two days and then two days like okay you know, you're shooting here. I'm shooting here. You're shooting there. What about this mm-hmm. guy popping around here? Oh shit. That's a good point. Reset. Let's do it again. You know, yeah. like with that in mind. So yeah, we um, even did just some under- PVP against each other too. actually shoot. Yeah. Seeing like yep. good places to hide in there. If we were defending it, attacking it. So I, I yeah. want to say we must've went over a hundred different scenarios in yeah. that small room. And if I remember correctly, they weren't even in a position I thought they would be in, right? Like, yeah, they were still, they, they ended still up being us. somewhere completely different. And it was like, ah, yeah. oh, fuck. But we had practiced it so many different ways that it ended up being like a quick adjustment for us. Like, oh, guy's not in the place that he's supposed to be that I thought he was going to be. Ooh, oh, he's right there. You know, and it was just a micro movement to that dude. But, yeah. And uh, go, go watch that video again. It's on episode one in the, uh, it's linked there in the description. Um, Operation Blizzard. That's from my point of view. Um, I didn't record the comm, so if it doesn't make sense, just turn it without volume off. Just watch it for what it is. It's fantastic. Yeah. So that's one form of meta is the what the game gives you, right, an airlock. Um, the second form of meta is something <laughs> that uh, I don't understand why the devs put in, but a, a six, like a semi-automatic grenade launcher is another form of meta. <laughs> Anybody who's been doing FPS or had PvP in Star Citizen knows that... Almost every org we've ever talked to is, is says, uh, you know, orgs are, are literally considering not allowing grenade launcher in org versus org ops because of just how stupid powerful it is. Right. And and I don't blame them. I don't either. But are we wrong for that is the question. So, again, we go back to most dangerous, right? We're talking about MD Koa here. Most dangerous course of action right now in any org v org battle is going to be in a confined area is going to be a grenade launcher. So we took the time to try to figure out how to defeat those grenade launchers. And I'm going to put it out on this episode so that hopefully two things happen. One, there are no restrictions to any kind of like org v org battles, right? Go do mm-hmm. them if, the, if that's, you know, if you. 
you feel like that's the correct thing for you and the orgs that you're you're playing with, by all means, set your restrictions. But if you want to try unrestricted, I'm going to tell you how to defeat this, the, the grenade launcher right now. Run. That's all you need to do. If you can move towards the point towards of origin it. of yes, if you could run towards the the point of origin of where you think that grenade launcher is going to be shot from, it, you're either going to get knocked back and it's not going to explode, or you're going to bu- get bypassed altogether, and your guys are already out of the airlock or this confined area, and that grenade's going to go off. Now they're stuck with a grenade launcher in their hand, and they're completely useless against you and your buddy with two guns pointing at them because they can't fire back fast enough or pull out a secondary or pull out their primary fast enough to be able to engage you. Yes. So if you want to be able to defeat grenade launchers in Star Citizen without any tools from Star Citizen, CIG, <laughs> then just run towards the gun. And I know it sounds completely ridiculous, but run towards that that grenade launcher yes. and you will completely make that grenade launcher useless to those individuals. Yes. And then now your boys behind you have to make sure there's not dudes hiding on the flanks, but that grenade launcher becomes Right. If you know, useless. if you know, you know, you, you prime an airlock. We, we've even ghost. We even send airlocks in ghosts sometimes. Um, like if uh, we should probably tag the eradicator on this episode, too, because uh, yeah. he used it. And, and people are like, oh, you're using a grenade launcher. That's dumb. It's not dumb. It's in the game. It's doable. Yeah. Just like us camping a spawn point inside of a Carrick or an 890 jump as the team spawns and we're killing them in their beds. Oh, that's dumb. That's not honorable. It's well, cutting off your reinforcements. It's ta- completely tactical. I'm, cut, I'm cutting your re. All yeah. right, I'll stand at the door and wait for you to get out of the bed. Yeah, and yeah. then I'll shoot you. Chivalry. Right, right. Here's your pick up your gun let, before I kill you. <laughs> let me white glove you and yeah. let us do. No, pick up your sword. Is, your sword. The objective is to prevent, you know, whatever. Right? Like, yes. Um, this is just a, a task within that objective. Like, right. I, I can cut off their resupply. You know, right. are we going to say like, oh, no, all cargo ships on the battlefield are fair game. Like, yes. that's that's a fair game. Don't shoot the cargo ships so we can have bullets. No, bullets. No, I'm going to blow your car. Yeah. I'm going to blow your C2 up. I don't want you to have so bullets, you can't beans or bandages. Get bullets like that's that's a ridiculous request. It's to make, warfare, you know, right? Yeah. And then also a, a good segue, not segue, but a good another topic to bring up is the griefers in the game or what would be called right. griefers. If you go to Port Olisar and there's a griefer online, you spawn a ship, he blows it up. Oh, yeah. Like sometimes I will admit it's frustrating, but you can just hop servers. It's easy. Even if you have a group, if you're well organized, just hop servers. It's fine. Um, but that's a legit tactic. Like what do you think a blockade is? We're not going to let you right. pass this point. If you go past this point, we're going to blow you up. Or we're, we're not, not doing let... blockades and stars. Nobody can do blockades no, and stars because it's, not... it's unfair to the it's guy unfair. who's playing by himself. <laughs> well, that guy needs to get a buddy. Yeah, get some or friends. He needs to become Han Solo or find a new area. Like it's just real yeah. life, you know. Like, sorry, there's yeah. a DMZ. You can't go into North Korea right now. Like, I'm sorry, right? You know? Yeah. Um, the same thing with griefers. Well, there are people though. going into DMZ if they... in North Korea and dying. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. point. Good point. You yeah, can do it, but you're going to die. <laughs> The consequence, right? Now, mm. it's a little different when we're talking about a griefer at PO. Right. Um, but, like, essentially one man with a powerful enough ship and enough ammo or no ammo and just laser weapons can lock down Port Olisar. Is there anything yeah. wrong so with that? So, to me, that's an MP Koa, right? Like, that's the most probable. Every time I log into the game, an MP Koa for me is a griefer, right? How am I going to handle that griefer? <clears throat> what am I going to do to defeat him um, or them, right? Yeah. What am I going to do to uh am i gonna am i gonna engage like is do i need to challenge my ep in size that much that i need to engage this griefer or just let him do his thing and yeah. just move servers right like yeah, whatever move servers you know? catch a ride parlay with them sure join yeah him. we've had many interactions with with griefers at porto where it's yeah. like hey dude in chat like can we pass you know and, and he's just role playing some troll where he wants 100 yeah. credits okay here's your 100 credits man these are the guys I want to pass. All right, cool. Done. Yeah. I won't. And then he goes to like fucking everyone else up, but us. You yeah. Know? And then what's cool is if you message that guy later, maybe you become friends with him. You're like, Hey, I need your services. They're going to be like, Hell yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> you can use them. You can friend them. Uh, the one, number one thing you shouldn't do with a griefer is bitch about it in the chat. Yeah, don't I, bitch. Don't, don't bitch about it. You're just going to fuel yeah. his desire to do it and like it's his type of gameplay if he wants to lock down po and shoot shoot ships on the pad like more power to him i want to if you want right. to go mine go more power to you 
if someone's stopping you from mining, like, guess what? They can. <laughs> it's a video game. Yeah. You know, I mean, so just, that's our citizen. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not ignoring the plight of those who don't like griefers. It's just like work around it. What can you do? Switch we're trying serve. to give you tools to work around it. Yes. Right. Like there it is. it's frustrating. I, I'm not sitting here saying that I have not like that's another raged rabbit. at my computer at a griefer before, but <laughs> I, I'm now old enough where I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, exit the menu. <laughs> you know what yes. I mean? Like it's immediately as I see ships blowing up, eh, exit the menu. I'll figure it out. <laughs> right. Right. And sometimes it's kind of fun to be like, Hey, how can we do this? Like, uh, just yeah, yesterday, right. me and Chankov again, we're bringing you up Chankov. Um, we, he landed on the pad. It, it just worked out. Like we, we came into PO, so we got lucky and we fought off a, a griefer who was, um, had an ion, uh, an Aries ion. Ooh, and, nice. uh, this is an FPS podcast. I want to be an FPS player, but me, Echo and I, we've said before, we still know how to fly. We like flying. Right. We're not against it and we are going to have to fly and that's how we get around in the verse. Cool. But we'll, we'll talk about the details. We'll save those details for other content creators. Um, but yeah, we, we, we just teamed up and then we ended up landing. We, we chased them off. We landed, stored our ships and then we had to leave again, but he, there he was again, blowing people's ship up. And so we just, uh, we just messaged him and parlayed with him and he let us pass in a hoplite. It was awesome. Um, we're like, Hey, we, we had a good fight with you a minute ago. Like, do you mind if we just pass and leave? He's like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. See ya. Sometimes talking to the Terry's is the best option. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's another form of meta, you know, to, to circle it back to what we we're talking about. We we're talking about meta. So the grenade launchers, to sum it up, if you have someone, if you're expecting a grenade launcher and you're coming through an airlock and there's a grenade launcher pointed at you, tough cookies, buddy. Deal with it. How do you deal with it? Beep. Run straight at the guy with the grenade launcher. Run. Sprint. Beep. Yeah, be faster than they are with the left mouse button. I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, you're going to die. Like, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Like, what's the first rule but of the, the knife point? The point is, is like, you're gonna get if cut. you die, but 50% of your team makes it in, that's the point. Right? And you like, can, yes. And now it's even better because you can actually get revived. And right. then it creates more gameplay for other parts of your org or other groups if they have medical desires mm-hmm. to come down and patch you up and whatnot. Yep. Um, Cuddy Reds, uh, Carrick's, all that. So it's, yeah. it's, it's awesome. I, I'm really enjoying the layers that we have to this. But to say, I think a lot of, uh, player versus player orgs, and that that's a, a one reason why Echo and I started Branders Privateers, and I think I'll segue into this for the sake of time too. But we started our own org so we could have control over how how we perceive these things, um, because we've been in some groups, uh, great groups, but you know they were very controlled by the meta. They let the meta control them, which it will sometimes because an, an OP, an overpowered grenade launcher will get the better of you at some point. <laughs> it's just going to happen. Yeah, I don't want to focus on a grenade launcher, yes. but I have to right now. You know, it's just part of the it's yeah, it's part of the meta for ground play. And it it's is. something I have to consider and defeat. So and, and we'll bring this up again here to end the segment out because it, it ties into what what we really want to talk about. <laughs> but uh Anyway, yeah, having that meta, what actually helped us overcome it, we were actually getting in a PvP situation. We were fighting over an 890 jump, and the defenders had a grenade launcher at the top of that atrium. You remember, Echo? Um, and that's where we kind of figured it out. Uh, we just sprinted in through those doors. We, 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 we dilly-dallied for a minute, and the doors would open, and two or three grenade rounds would just decimate us. And so we're like, fuck it. And we just ran in there. <laughs> full boost. A full yeah. boost, full because sprint. Because th- 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 that yeah. particular group was expecting the grenade to do all the work. They didn't expect eight dudes to come rushing in. Yeah. And then, you know, everyone's scrambling to try to find targets. And then the, the grenade launcher guy's like, oh, I'm useless. And he's dead, you know. Yeah. And so And nobody else was ready because they were expecting the, the grenade launcher to lock down the doorway and... So right. we got in, and then we scattered, and it was just chaos from there. So we, we still lost people, and they respawned. But, but yeah, we, we were able to complete the objective, yes. and that was the that's the big takeaway is, yeah. are you there to get kills? Are you there to get your own, you know, grow your own EP? Are you there for the team EP. to complete whatever objectives, and you know, has you've created, right? Like, because mm. we're just creating these objectives. They're not, you don't get XP or, you know. <laughs> anything uh, it's just oh i overcame a pretty big point of contention yeah. i feel good about that and like are we we're, we're like we're okay with that being able to defeat a grenade launcher 
if if there was a better solution, we would adopt that. But currently, yeah. there's not. And then the other solution for a grenade like launcher, shields, yeah, shields, personal shields, shields CIG, or, uh, maybe making the grenade launcher not a six shooter, just make it an individual. The thumper, load man. a thumper, yeah, on, baby. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Why would we have a rotary fed grenade like six? We have that, but no nods. Like... Yeah, we don't have that. <laughs> so we'll save that for the context part. We're going to talk about. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's why we started Branders Privateers. Uh, it's kind of Echo's baby. Uh, I think now it's just it's as much baby. mine. But yeah, it's ours. We raise yeah, it together. It's, it's everybody's. It's everybody it's, who's a privateer. It it's is their baby. It's, it's all the privateers. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's a it's, council. We yeah. own it together. It's a council, and we usually defer any you know the matters that should be deferred or or go or go up to Echo because he's the the gatekeeper of the community. Um, but that's why we did it so we could have more control and. And avoid a lot of the pitfalls. Here's the next topic. Pitfalls of a military simulation org. Do you wanna should we So can I start itch? this one? Can I can I start this off? I want to start this off with a question. Yeah. So and I wanna be as frank but as accommodating as possible. A, a blunt, nice question. Yeah. So does your org have military rank? Comma why and so <laughs> yes. I, i'm gonna just leave that question out there for you right and and again if you if that's how you want to play the game that's how you want to role play there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. but what i've seen from many mil sim orgs right and there's a lot to do it right i i there's i'm not going to name names here on good or bad but there are a lot of cool sim uh, orgs i've seen that have done military structure uh, but and, and have futurized it in Star Citizen. And I respect that. I think that's really cool. But <clears throat> I asked that question. You can answer it. You don't have to answer it. That's fine. But do you understand what those ranks are there for and intended yes. for, right? And, and they have an intention. They have a reason. And I think, again, if you have those and you're not using those ranks to the fullest potential, you're doing a disservice to your org. Yes. I'll say that. Yes. Um, and I think I'll, I'll touch on this because it's my opinion as much as, as it is yours from previously stated conversations we've had. Um, the rank of corporal, sergeant, specialist in the army. Um, lieutenant. Lieutenant, captain. Those, uh, we're not saying don't do it. Do, go do it. Go do oh, you. Yeah, do you it. do you, boo-boo. That's your phrase, right? You do you, boo-boo. <laughs> yeah, you do you, boo-boos. Yeah, so go do it. But from Echo and I's standpoint... We're not actively holding those ranks. We know people who have died and paid dearly um, with loss of limbs and life. And, you know, they've sacrificed to hold those ranks and earn those ranks in real world scenarios. And so it feels, and I, I would say if you're a veteran and you agree, you know, if you're playing Arma Squad, if you're playing, if you're in any type of video game organization and they're doling out ranks like that, it kind of feels gross or icky or weird to like call. To me, it does. To me, yeah. This is how Echo and I both feel. I second that. To me, it feels weird. It feels icky. Like I, I know, I know that you know, John, John Dinglehopper here from California, who's a 16 year old kid. He's not really a sergeant and hasn't done anything to do that. So it's weird for me, being a veteran, to call him a sergeant, you know, in a video yeah. game. That's weird. Yeah. Now, I want to flip the tables on that, right? Flip uh, it. I have been a part of a couple of orgs that have implemented that stuff. And there have been people that have reached out to me on a personal level and asked me questions about joining the Marine Corps, these younger, you know, players, sure. 17, 18-year-old dudes, right? And they're like, hey, what's it like? What should I do? I'm thinking about it. And actually, I was just rewarded again uh, by a, a former org mate uh, from a different org joining the Marine Corps. And I, I couldn't be more proud. Right. Like he took that extra step because I, I think I've said it a few times, probably what with him in the voice channel. Like, if you want that, go get it. Go do it. Yeah. Like, Dive in. Just go do it. Yeah. It's available to everyone. You, everyone could join the military. Yeah. Um, and he did. And I'm, I'm like. I'm like super proud. Like I'm a proud Papa, you know, uh, of, of that individual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to call him out cause you know, he's a Marin now, but he's part of the brotherhood and he's a Marin. I respect that. And, I, and what was crazy is we had that conversation. He's like, I totally get now why this bugs you. And it's, 
It's you know, that. and it's just one of those things like the civilians are going to watch this and go, wow, these two dipshit veterans are Rather PTSD p- fueled, right? They're, uh, they're pretentious. But in reality, like it's a thing, you know, like, uh, you know, but it's. Yeah, it it's was very real to us. That we, it was very, we, very real. Yeah. 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 And so uh, that's why but we do it. If that's yeah. your thing, do it. Don't let us stop you. We're just two dipshits on the Internet. But and what we found as well, uh, it, it just kind of creates a superiority complex. No matter how solid everybody is, it kind of just creates this like superiority complex uh, and it makes a bottle even I, subtle. It's very yeah, subtle, sometimes. super subtle. And it makes a it makes a bottleneck of ineffectiveness because. You know, you need to get things changed or do something. And like we have found, and you, you second this if you agree. I'm, I'm saying we, but uh, I've found, and you can agree if you want to, Echo, that in a video game where there's a lot more flexibility, like you don't need permission from somebody else to do something in a video game just because they hold a notional rank, right? Sure. Oh, like, yeah. oh, I don't know if we can do that. That's not up to uh, us. That's that's I don't hold that rank. It's just the human condition that automatically defers to an authority, ranking, figure, position, whatever it is. I don't know the science behind it, but like it's based such on a... finances and logistics and orders <laughs> and the DOD. Yes. And all, you know what I mean? Like all these, the government, like all yeah. these factors play into that, that leadership yes. decisions. Right? So, so that's what a, a sergeant has a real world title. Like it has real world weight. A captain, a lieutenant, a commander, like those things mean something in the real world for a reason. So if you want to role play as that in the game, go ahead. But we found it really staunches the organization's effectiveness and ability to do like, what do you call it? Uh, Autonomy, right? Because, oh, I don't know. I I can't make the call on that. I'm not, I don't own the org. I'm not a sergeant or a captain. I'm just a lance corporal in this mill sim org, and it's like, wait, let's <laughs> like, lance corporals have power, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, dude, you okay? So let's let's step back, like, drop drop the uh, the fake sergeant titles and, and captains, let that go because that's not real. You work sixty hours a week doing X Y Z. You have right. this much amount of time allocated between your job, your family, your dogs, your kids, whatever it is, fill in the blank, and you have this much hours of free time, and you choose the to use them role playing as a private and, and following orders <laughs> from a notional sergeant. And he's telling you that you can't do a certain aspect of gameplay in the game because, because why, uh, you know, and that appeals to some people. I it can does. totally see where that w- w- can appeal to some people, right? Um, those, those individuals that that time where that time's only 30 minutes and they just want somebody to come tell them what to do. And, and yeah. I get that. And, <laughs> I'm not saying it's wrong, right? We're not, I don't think we're sitting here saying it's wrong. No. I think we're just saying like, be careful and mindful. If you're that org leader, right, that's implemented this, just be careful and mindful that you're understanding what those ranks can do, right? Or you're applying, um, you're applying some level of like autonomy to your organization with with levels of check based on those ranks, right? Because yeah, you, you don't have to follow the Marine Corps sergeant or the Army sergeant, right, or the equivalent of an Air Force E five or Navy E five, but understand what that what that entails, right? Like mm-hmm. even go back to medieval days, there were fucking corporals and sergeants, you know, like yeah, understand like even if you break it down to that level, understand what those ranks were meant, why they were implemented, yes, and, and don't hide behind them and what it know? means. And if you have somebody that is doing that. They might be ruining other people's gameplay. So just be mindful of that stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, being being mindful, we find that's the best approach to a community online is there needs to be order and structure. So in mm-hmm. Brander's Privateers, we have a rank system that doesn't tie to any real world merit. You know, we have our own ranks, uh, but it's not sergeant and corporal and stuff. It's it's more futuristic, more science fiction. It you know, and it also has less importance in our org because we a lot of people yes. have a voice. Um, but we do have some rigidity in, in our tactics and who's in command over operations side of thing. But it's very right. loosey-goosey after that. We flow. It's very fluid and rigid when it needs to be. Um, as Bruce Lee says, you must be like water, ever flowing. <laughs> when you pour water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle, right? Like That's, that's kind of how yeah. we run our org. 
Um, and so some of the, that's some of the pitfalls of having a military simulated org. I felt I've been in those, and so have you, Echo, right? And I personally felt I was very limited in what I could do. Like, I was a ground pounder. That's where I want to be. I want to be a ground combat. That's why we're doing this podcast. But if if I need to jump in a fighter, like, that's totally doable because that's other part of the games I have. I have dual sticks. I fly. So I would prefer to be in the back of a drop ship uh, with a rifle, but I can, you know... But there was no autonomy. No, you can't because you don't have enough rank. Or you can't right. you can't do this in the game because you haven't been certified by us. That's another pitfall of the military simulations is having certifications. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Um, uh, you, <laughs> again, it's just another way to play the game. Yeah. And if that if that's how people and orgs want to structure themselves, I'm all for it. Just understand, Good like, point. and really that's on us, right? I, I I'll take the hit on that one right like if i when i did i guess i took responsibility for that and said you know this is not how i want to play the game so i left um but you know that some people need and want that direction what i'm what i guess what i'm saying is is if if you're in that position or you're implementing those positions just make sure the people that are in those positions are not guys that have been in your org for 15 years they're they're people who are smart enough to take those positions yep. and enact them correctly. Right? Competency um, over ten years. Yeah, competence. Yeah, competency over ten years. And that's yes. another big pitfall of Milsim orgs is that time equals knowledge. Rank. And that's or yeah. Or time. Yeah, that's a better way to put. Time equals rank, and time does not equal rank. Like, yep. trust me. Maybe in a I game like World of Warcraft, plenty of guys in the military who did not get a certain rank, even though. <laughs> yes, I was they one of probably those. Probably be a time. <laughs> Should have had it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. They just weren't competent enough to hold the rank of sergeant, right? So they didn't. So that I think the big, the biggest pitfall, just to sum it up, um, is that you know these ranking systems of a military simulated org. For those of you who are not in an org, for those of you who don't understand this little corner of of Star Citizen, there are a lot of cool things you can do with big groups of people. Uh, oh, and they, they usually tend to leave, lean towards a private military, a militia, or a military in general. And so they have these rankings, private, sergeant, corporal, lieutenant, whatever. They have a, a structure, and it's cool. But what it brings in is a lot of people who want to be a, a commander, who want to be an officer. Um, and there's no real requirements for doing that other than just showing up to the org. So it really, a lot of your gameplay could be stepped on. If you want that, go ahead. But we've found the groups, the interest of the groups were often staunched and stepped on, and people's time was not respected. So that's, that's a pitfall of military sims. Be aware of that. If you think it's cool to role play as that, go ahead and do it. We're never going to judge you for it, except on this podcast right now. <laughs> but uh, another pitfall is the blocking people i mean they do it out of they want someone who's competent to be the pilot to be the medic to be whatever so you have to go do these certifications so if you come in there with any experience in that just be prepared to be blocked until you meet their requirements and do that mm -hmm. which is totally fine it's just frustrating because i have limited time to play and i know a lot of people do and so you know. well there's a level of and i don't mean to like be you know you know, black to your gray or white here, but no, like, do it. There, there is a level of gameplay. And I think something that I enjoyed from an organization like that was that that was gameplay. That was when the game was not given, when star system wasn't giving us much like for ground play, there was some gameplay aspect to that. Right. Yeah. And we kind of made our own content. We made our own game. Yeah, we did. We did make our own content out of that. And I respect that for those, those individuals that were able to create content out of the sandbox again, that is star citizen. And and make it feel, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like somewhat like home for me. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. But Agreed. The... But uh, in the end, it did get in the way, and that's why we left. A little bit. Yep. yep. Got in the way. So uh, if you, if you're interested in, ha in hanging with a good group of people, uh, we're a community first. We're Branders Privateers, and uh, you know, this is our podcast stuck in the nail, of course. But ultimately, we we just want to share our knowledge with the community. And, and maybe, uh, you know, 
get some conversation going with some develop developers about a few certain things. But mainly, we, we just want to attract cool people. If, if you have been listening to the podcast so far and you like what you're hearing, if you agree with it, or even if you don't and you want to challenge us and, and you know do it, leave comments. Yeah. Come hang with us in our Discord. We encourage you to have differing opinions. Like just yesterday, like uh, one of our org guys, a uh, great guy. Oh, man, we got into a really good conversation. It was talking about oh. the points of this podcast, this like podcast, this episode. Yeah. We're about and we to had like a, what, an hour long oh, conversation yeah, we did. about it. And, and it gets heated, differing points. but we're all adults and we understand that we're homies. And we can get yeah, heated. Yeah, we can yeah. be passionate and disagree. And that's mm-hmm. I think that's missing in a lot of corners of society today. It's like you have to like burn bridges if you don't agree with somebody. No. So sure. come challenge us. Throw out your improves. Like let us know what we're we're really doing shitty on this podcast and we will right, answer yeah. you. Um, which brings us to a good point. Like we were talking we were asked a question on Reddit. I don't know if you have that up, Echo. Uh yeah, I do. I wanna I, I made sure it was cool, but uh uh strong was it stronghold BK seventy eight yep. on Reddit uh, asked a really interesting question. And I wanted to talk about it because it's something that I've had a concern about too, but the the question revolved around theaters of war. Um, And I'll read his question uh, Mm. verbatim. Um, But basically what he says is one big concern I've had is an arena commander. It is very arcade, like call of duty style. It's not very tactical at all. Just run, shoot, die, run, shoot, die. I chalked this up to being uh, an early development and not reflective of the end game, but watching theaters of war announcement footage, I had uh, that hadn't seemed to change much. I came from, uh, he, he lists some games that he's played. So his question, uh, how do you expect the, they will bridge this gap and address this? Uh, do you think Theaters of War will be modified before release? Uh, let me answer that question. No. But let me say this. And let's, my headset just died. <laughs> yeah, take your time. Um, I would agree with you. I don't think it will bridge the gap. The gap. It's an, I, I think that's what Echo's saying. W- once he gets his headset working, we'll, we'll ask. Uh, but I agree. I, I don't think it will bridge the gap completely. But I think it will be a great medium for us to train and work as teams and get the most out of it we possibly can. I think there's opportunity for great teamwork and organizational tactics to be used. But it, will it be a run, shoot, die most likely it's going to be battlefield basically yes but yeah. if you're a fan of fps gameplay and star citizen mm. you should 1000 percent be rooting for theaters of war and, and and i think i didn't hear you because my headset was dead but yeah. along those lines of like this is an area for us to be able to test combined arms right and we it's hard for us to do that right now in the game in a consistent manner now the end product from theaters of war versus star citizen pu will be vastly different, but it will give you an opportunity to work with your teammates. It'll give you an opportunity to work through close quarter situations. It'll give you an opportunity to face um, air assets or vehicle assets Hmm. and create those SOPs for that you could take over into the PU and then test there in org v org events or operations. Um, so while you may not enjoy what theaters of war is as a whole, you have to be able to slice it apart and yeah. take what you want to out of theaters of war. So think of theaters of war as like a, a, a set up field exercise in the military, which mm-hmm. these things are always set up. There's op four, there's missions, right? Like, and, and look at it from that perspective versus looking at it from, the perspective of like, well, this is a completely different gameplay. Now, if you let your individual actions be affected by theaters of war and you create bad habits on that, yes, that's not good. But again, hey guys, let's get into theaters of war. Let's let's go through and talk about our experiences, right? Like what happened? Well, mm-hmm. you know, Daft and I came against the vehicle and Daft pulled out a rocket launcher and, and killed it in two shots while I distracted it. Okay, well, that could be an SOP. Now we scale it up to the to the squad level. Well, team one, you are anti-rockets, right? Like you're anti-vehicles. Team two, you are the flanking squad. You're gathering its attention. And team three, you're just there to make sure not everybody dies, right? Yeah. So use it to use Theaters of War. I'm excited for Theaters of War. I'm super pumped. I, I Obviously, I'm a Battlefield fan. So like, like that, that entices me and it's Star Citizen. It makes me feel like, we're playing 2142 
probably nobody in here knows what that game is, but it was <laughs> awesome. Um, so I'm excited for Theaters of War, but I will, while I'll enjoy it for what it is, I'll also be pulling out those little things from Theaters of War and being like, yes. well, P4 didn't feel right, right? Or yeah. the rocket launcher was way too effective against the Nova tank. And, and those are just things like that you can pull out and, and test in the PU later. So mm. use it to hone your skills, but don't use it to define them, if that makes sense. That's cool. That's very well said. And I think theaters of war will allow for a lot of development balancing. So we yes. don't have overpowered grenade launchers, you know, like <laughs> right. or we have means to, or there's them. tools in place for grenade launchers. Like, yes. okay, well the grenade launcher <clears throat> sucks. Let's de develop this real quick to put it in. And then that yeah. carries over into the PU. And so, you know, these little meadows get broken within a game like, yeah. like uh, there's war. So and that's what I hope it will uh, flesh I, out. I use arena yeah. commander to learn how to fly better. Uh, if I'm being honest, like, again, we're not a flight podcast, but you, you brought up arena commander. It is, it is kind of arcadey, but I have become a better flight like pilot in PU because I go to arena commander and test out my controls, test out my key binds, test out my joysticks, you know, maybe tweak my track IR a little bit or, or whatever, you know? Yeah. I wish they had a, uh, in arena commander, I wish they had an atmospheric level. Uh, cause you, you could load in with people and put them on the ground and practice maneuvers, ground maneuvers with drop ships yeah. or support craft. Um, cause that's, that's all part of ground combat. So we will from time to time discuss flight as pertaining to ground combat in mm -hmm. here. So we're not, yes. oh not yeah, I mean, they're tied. I mean, the game yeah. is about ships. We, we understand yeah. that. That's, I think we said that in episode one, we know this game is about spaceships. What we're trying to do is look at this game through the focal lens of yep. FPS and ground play, right? Like, what's it like to be a grunt? What, right. what does that look like in in the universe of mm. all these ships, right? And so we will be talking yes. about ships, but just from a different perspective, right? And also, uh, what what was his name on Reddit? I don't have it in front of me. Uh, it is Stronghold BK seventy eight. So again, thank you yes. for that question so much. Uh, and everybody on Reddit, thanks for your feedback. As well, we yes. are now again. Wow. Reminder: We're on Spotify and everything, and all, all, all the cheese. We're on it. So, it's uh, amazing. Yeah. I did not expect to get as much of a. Yeah, people. Like, I think Vesper posted this on. on yeah, Reddit, thanks, Vesper. People were like, "Holy fucking shit, this is great!" So, thank you guys so yeah. much. And even if it's not great, let us know. We'll we'll make it great. Huh. But <laughs> um, tell us to... it's not a podcast. What was that? Yeah. I, I just said, tell us it's not a podcast. That was yeah. Tell us it's not a podcast. Motiv and we'll, <laughs> motivated us. We'll put us it on every Spotify. podcast platform <laughs> just to spite you. Yeah. Right. Um, but stronghold to to capitalize on that too as well as um, oh crap! Now I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we were talking about it. Yeah, it'll stronghold. it'll help. Um, it, I think it will help flush out the next topic we want to talk about. That's what I was going to do. It will theaters of war might be super arcadey and whatever, but I think it's necessary to help flush out the context for why things are needed, which here's where we're going to maybe ruffle some feathers. I think echo is that, uh, -oh. uh, we feel, or I feel, I'll let's see if you agree. I feel that the developers, so here, listen up CIG. If you're listening, by the way, preface, we do not hate the game. We fucking love it. We, I love we're, this game. We're I want for this life. game to work more so than anyone yes. else. And I know there's going to be commenters who are like, no, nah, I want it. Uh, no, I want it more than anyone else. Yeah. And we, we want it to succeed. We want to play it for the rest of our lives. Um, but the, there's a lot of missing context. Like the question why can be asked a lot. Why? So we can talk about uh, forced force dynamics what is that called force reactions uh for, force reactions force reactions force are reactions. in the game yep. cool i understand why? it's alpha we got to test it out but why <laughs> don't i why? have something to counteract that right if i am in a first person we're talking about first person aspects of the game if you are not the pilot if you are a, a turret gunner b an engineer c uh, a ground guy and four, because I went ABC four, okay? Four, you're somebody else on a spaceship and you're not seated 
because there's not conveniently located drop seats in some ships where they should be. That's another thing. Why? 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 Why do I get tossed around the ship? Oh, it's because they're testing it. we got to get information. Yeah, but why can't I hold on to something too? Why can't we test that? Can I brace? Right? Because if I'm moving about a ship, um, if I'm staging to drop out of a drop ship, to, to, to leave a Valkyrie quickly, to leave a Cuddy Black, a Prowler, like, Prowler's pretty easy. You just get out of the seat and walk out. So that that's not applicable. Plus, I don't think the... I, I hate the Prowler, to be honest. Going to ruffle some feathers there again. Why, if there's force dynamics, why don't we have a tool to combat it, right? If I'm an engineer going to fix an engine, why can't I brace? Am I just going to get knocked on my ass every time the pilot sneezes? You know, why? What's the context? So, yeah, it's testing, but, like, why can't we test something else simultaneously? And I'm not a programmer. I'm not a coder, so maybe that goes over my head. Some more context that's missing. What was the I used an analogy yesterday, Echo. Remember, it was the uh, the U.S. government, for example. The U.S. Army didn't have a need for an Apache. Like they had an infantry first, right? They had infantry, they had tanks, soldiers on the ground, and then they developed a need for an Apache helicopter to come mm-hmm. help them and assist. They didn't develop the Apache helicopter first and then build an army around a helicopter. That's what CIG is doing currently. So here we have a first-person experience in a space simulation game. And we don't know, we don't have any context on what warfare is going to be like on the ground. What kind of assets will be on the ground, resources, uh, how big the battles will be. We don't have any of that context. So I can't really like hold it against them. Right? Do you think? Or can we? Well, so I'll use the Prowler as an example. The Prowler to me feels like a very specific type of dropship. And and maybe that's an artist. Maybe that was a designer. Maybe it was a collection of both. Maybe it was a team that sat down and said, well, what, what is a dropship? What is a dropship? Where like, what can we, what, are there real life examples of what a drop? So it feels like they took a very specific type of of vehicle used to drop modern troops off into battle and then spaced it up, right? Like threw some uh, alien lore around it. Futurized it. And yeah, they futurized it a little bit. Um, And me personally, and as a citizen in SARS, I will never get on a prowler. I, well, we did. Well, we did because it was meta. And guess what, what happened? I wanted, but certain yeah. Eclipse pilot put a yeet in our butts. Size nine yeet. Size Very nine. Specifically a size yeah, nine. It's big, that's the biggest yeet you can put. And in blew us butt. up. Yeah. So <laughs> like it, it, it's a target. And you know what didn't get blown up? Cutty the black. Cutty blacks. Cutless black. Right. Like they did not. God die. bless that I, shit. I mean, I think eventually they figured it out. But that wasn't the point. The point is, is that the cutless blacks, while the prowlers are just, you know, falling out of the sky. Here's the Cuddy Black doing its fucking thing. Just chugging. And dropping troops off, right? Like, just chugging along. <laughs> yeah. the, little, the, little, the little Cutlass Black that could, you know? Do you think um, the Cutlass Black has a broader context in the game than a Prowler? It does, it right? Does. And so, I, I mean, we're talking about ships here. But, yes, I think it does have a bro- broader context. As pertaining context. to ground. And, again, that's why I go back to my original statement where I feel like the Prowler was meant for a very specific type of drop procedure right like Mm -hmm. and that to me is fly in undetected land open your doors and let dudes out and while that is a way to drop troops off i would argue that that's a very inefficient way to drop troops off because the time that it takes to how many jump seats are in there there's what eight yeah i want to say eight to i think there's like total like 13 or 14 if you add them all up it's an even number, but yeah. it's somewhere around the, the 12 to 18, 12 to 16 mark, right? Sure. Uh, getting getting that amount of people to get out of their seats simultaneously, open their doors or have the pilot open the doors, whatever, and exit the in a timely manner is such an yes. arduous and like ridiculous process while you're on the ground. So you can already take away the fact that the prowler can't land in a hot zone 
right? Even though the concept art shows that it can, it's not going to be able to land it. If you land that thing near two Nova tanks, good luck. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. There goes you your prowler and there two, goes yeah. all your troops that were in that thing, right? Okay. Well, it's just Ursa's or it's just a couple of, you know, uh, anti-air turrets, right? Like good luck. Yeah. You're talking about a, 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 like a maximum of 10 to 15 seconds to get everyone that's supposed to be out of that thing out of it. Right. And that's too long for a dropship to be it on is. the ground or in the area. Like you, what? So now you're relegated to dropping these troops off kilometers behind exactly you know, the, the engagement line. And that now was... you have to have other support ships. If you want them to patrol on foot, fine, let them patrol on foot. But, but now you're what? now you're patrolling on foot. They don't have or tools. you have to bring in. Yeah, they don't have the tool. You or now a... you're bringing in other ships like <laughs> yeah. a Liberator to drop ground vehicles off so they can drive like the it... context. Right. What's the context? <laughs> right. Well, we don't know what a ground battle looks like. And plus, right. we don't have any tools. So a prowler can is it supposed to drop us off on the objective? Then you have that time issue which is not ideal for dropping troops because guess what happens? Let's say you come in super hot to mm -hmm. land. Well, I got to get out of my seat first and then jump out. And we have to coordinate that with all t 16 people in there. Very, very hard to do, even for an experience. But even if people. you have a sequence command and on that second to last sequence command, you're already out of your jump seat. Now you have force reaction. Exactly. That's my point. Uh, thank you for finishing that. <laughs> now, sorry. Now that you get out, no, that was it. It's like it's very hard to coordinate timing that, and in a combat situation where you have to do things on the fly, it's very likely that your timing will be off, and someone will miss, and or the pilot will miss call it, and then you're waiting for people to get out of their chairs, and then if I do get out of my chair early, you just nailed it. Force reaction. I'm gonna get tossed on my back, or out the door that's already open, or phase through the ship. It's just uh, opening up a can for more bugs. Of the alpha game, which, you know, CIG, we're not here to bitch about your bugs. Like, no, no, no. you know, like we some know. of them we maybe need some attention, but we, we understand it's alpha. So anybody about to post this, like, we know it's alpha. We're worried about the context of the game. We don't, we don't, me and Echo and I, we're grunts, dude. We don't, we don't understand programs, programming, coding. I can barely type on a keyboard. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't give a shit about that stuff because I don't know about it. I respect it, but I don't know about it. All I'm worried about is the context of the combat. Because in real life, if I'm going to home defense or if I'm going to assault a Taliban facility, like actually conduct warfare, or I'm going to do home self-defense in my house, two completely different forms of combat and different equipment and gear and, and, and plans will be laid out for those things. So we don't even know what the context of combat on the ground is on Star Citizen. And here we have a dedicated dropship that probably won't work because of force reactions. We don't have any ability to brace. So there's this ridiculous amount of timing needed to drop someone under pressure, under fire. Good luck. Or the alternative, Echo, you said it, we drop them five clicks away. And then good luck to that infantry squad because there's no goddamn tools for you to navigate yourself to the objective <laughs> and i know the prowler pilots are already in the comments feverishly typing like yeah. but we have all these guns yes you do but now you're <clears throat> whipping your ship around with your troops in some sort of in mm -hmm. their seat out of their seat and again force reactions is there yeah. so while you're the han solo hero killing all the armor on the ground and then you drop all these troops it's like <laughs> what was the point of even dropping troops? Yeah, why why are they you know, needed? Like, yeah, what's the like so again, it's con so we're not saying we're not like I'm not like mm -hmm. the prowler is a, a needed ship. It will be something that has a place in, in combat. But I think what we're trying to get at here is what is that context? Like why CIG is developing these these infantry focused ships based on what? Right. Why? What yeah, like why? Why? Um we don't know and, what and it's gonna look like. Right, yeah, like, exactly. Why? Like we don't have a combined arms exercise. Like that's we what have theaters no combined arms right now. We do, but we don't. Right, like yes, you could put a Nova tank at a uh, at a facility, and yes, you can drop troops, and then yes, you can have yes, so you can test these combined arms. But uh, you know, and the other topic. Well, I won't get to that yet. But you, <laughs> so it does exist, but there's no like it's forced. It's built by us yeah, using we're... the tools that we have. And then you make a very specific type of dropship 
based on a very specific type of gameplay, I'm assuming, right? Like, cause I, I mean, CIG, they're smart people. I, I doubt they made this just all willy nilly, but I think it was with a very specific type of combat in mind. Right. And, and maybe they do have it defined. Maybe this is where if, if, if anyone can, if anyone's watching this podcast, if you can get this question to CIG, we'll probably, we'll try and post it on spectrum in the forums, but like, is there more context that we as the player base, as the backers, as someone who is, I'm a concierge, like I know Echo's close. If you're not, uh, I am. You yeah. are? Okay. And then we have guys, there's people who have spent a lot of money on this game for good. We all love it. Okay. But like, is there more that we should know about your context? Like, can you fill us in a little bit? And we're not mm-hmm. trying to ridicule here. We're not trying to cause. No, well, not at all. We're going to cause waves because people are passionate about this game. And that's what we call, love. Call it frustration. frustration. Right? Call, it, call yeah. it end user frustration. Right? Sure. Like, we're idiots playing your game and we're frustrated. <laughs> yes. And we're just wondering why. Like, but we, we, still, the, we still have money you know? we want to give you. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, we have. We're dumb. We're dumb asses with money trying to give it to you and just trying to understand yes. the reasoning behind something being created. Right. Like, yeah. So help us out here. What what's the yeah. context? Like, wh- why do we need a redeemer? Um, is it is it a patrol craft for one star system that can move around? And there's a that's why there's four beds. And why why are the jump seats not on the bottom deck? Like, what what does that make sense of? But it? they are on the rafts. But they are on the raft. Yeah, you, the Argo raft makes more sense as a combat ship. As a yeah, at least as a, a ship to deploy from quickly, right? To be used in readiness than, uh, right. than a redeemer does. And they're like, I, oh. I don't want to call it. I, Cause we're going to get that. Uh, people are going to be like, well, redeemer's not a drop ship. Well, it was. A, we got it. We understand that it was, <laughs> yeah. it's not a drop ship anymore. It was, it was. And now it's not. We, we're right. clearly 100% behind on that. But again, you don't, you don't put your front door, you know, like of your house. You like, you don't have, like if you have an attached garage in your house, you don't just not put a door there. A door to your garage yeah. from That's your house. Point. That's a so great. That you point. have to walk out your front door and then walk around to your garage and open your garage door to get to your. That's inefficient. Yeah. And and I would argue that even though the raft isn't a combat ship, the reason why it's better is because all the the weapon racks, the the suit racks, the seats, everything are near the exit. Yeah. Makes sense. You don't get in your trunk of your car to get to your driver's seat. Like, <laughs> well, you know, it's not a car technically. Uh, it drives itself. Can you so imagine? You, you need to crawl you're all, through your trunk to get to your what the, exactly, it dude. Make I, sense. I get through. I get into my truck. I cry. I climb through the back tiny window of my truck every time. I don't know about you. Yeah, guys. the beer window. Yeah, yeah I every dri- time I, I I drive through there every time. That's how I get in. Every time, yeah. every day. I don't. I, you know, I have a door there. I just don't use it. I'm like, screw that. I'm it's going just, into the back middle window. Right. No. Um, from, a, from a ground perspective, if I'm yes. trying to exit a ship, combat or otherwise, expeditiously, right, on foot, mm-hmm. I do not want to have to climb up a ladder, grab my shit, climb down a ladder, yep, and then exit the ship. That You know, like, well, oh, yep. then just stay on the top part of the ship. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. That's one way to defeat it. But again, I still got to climb down a ladder. You know what I mean? Like, it just. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know about you, but I climb into the passenger seat to use that airbag before a crash, too. <laughs> yeah, <right>. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's a yeah. if it's a military ship. And I think CIG's response um, was they, they don't want to make ships that are overly redundant with each other. But like that's that's the whole point of having any military hardware hardware. It's redundant. Everybody has the same ammo, the same gear, the same equipment. A ship is multifaceted, multipurpose. Um like you know, and then when needed, military Black will Hawk make can do. destroy a bunch of targets and also lift troops and, off the and ground. Lift troops, thank you. So like that's like trying to say, well, you got to go through the pilot hatch of the Black Hawk to get into the cargo section mm-hmm. of the Black Hawk, because technically the Black Hawk's a gunship, and we didn't want it. You know, like uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. and even even people have been evacuated on an Apache helicopter too. Uh, not not ideal at all. They no, did not it, at all. But they it wasn't designed for that either. So to defend that point a little bit, but you know, it's it, so we. I, I'm wondering if CIG, if it, do you guys know the context of of which you're doing things, right? I mean, like a lot of the spaceships didn't have uh, they they don't have they didn't it wasn't built into the spaceship to have a nozzle to fill gas, you know, fill ref, to refuel, and now they're adding that again in the gold standard. 
Um, and the gold standard will always be behind because new things, as, as we develop the game. Well, or, nothing will ever be gold standard. Right? Exactly. That's my point is that <laughs> the gold standard is they're always chasing it because new things are going to come out. They're going to flesh out new gameplay and they're going to go, oh, shit. Everything on this game or on this ship doesn't work as well as it should. Now we have to put the Gladius back in gold standard for this XYZ. That's just an example. I don't know if it will come to fruition, but um, again, we're just talking here. We want to we wanna understand the context of why, and we feel like ground combat and F first-person elements of the game have been completely overlooked because that's not where the money is. I, don't, I can't blame yeah. CIG. Can you blame them? I mean... No, I gotta sell I, 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 I'm gonna. I'll probably say this every fucking episode. I, I got it. No one's paying, and, and they have. They've actually put armor and guns up now for real money sale, and right. I'll probably support that by buying those things. And maybe that's an indication, like, oh, well, people want more of this stuff. Yeah. So, like, we'll sell more of it, and, and like, it, it's cheaper options to be able to help fund the game. But yes, I, I get that ships are their biggest seller, and they they have to fund the game, they have to keep funding uh, and developing, and, and so ships will always be there. But let's just can we like think about it from like can the FPS guys design a ship? Yeah, right. Like let the FPS team go. Well, wait a minute, hold on. What about what about drop? How can you drop people in yeah. the world? Like what are the different ways that you can infill and exfill? troops from a battlefield or or just it doesn't even have to be true you don't even have to put a, a combat spin on it how do we infill and exfill people on and off the ground in real in the real world right? yeah yeah like and think uh, about like the carrick is an example we were talking about yesterday like how you have a ramp and your ready room is at the back and you have to walk through three cargo modules to get to your vehicle bay and those That's modules it. can be detached and it's unclear yet. Maybe it maybe it is clear. If someone knows the answer, like does the catwalk disappear? If if we drop a cargo module off of a character when that comes on online and play, does that cargo or that catwalk does that disappear? Because uh, then then you have lost an entire corridor on your ship. So now I have to go to my ready room, go up, over, down, enter, wait for the door, go down. Like I get it. It's just inefficient. It's inefficient. And uh, what if you need to, what if it's only two people that need to exit the ship? <laughs> you know, like, so the car, the Carrick, I think, would be better if it just had an elevator that went to the ground, like that main elevator shaft. Just let that go all the way to the ground, just like the Hercules. But even in terms, and I think this this yeah. was brought up, this is a point that was brought up in the conversation we're having between within the org about it. Like, well, the, I think when the, you know, the, I think the comment was, so I'm paraphrasing, but basically along the lines of like, it's an exploration ship. So I don't think you're intended to get off it as often. <laughs> Damn camera, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'll finish that thought, though. That oh, there you uh, go, you're Yeah, right. you're not intended to get off of it as often as you normally would, right? Like it's not yeah. like you're meant to spend more time on it than off of it. But I would even argue like if you have to get off of it, it's such an arduous process to get off of that ship mm -hmm. that... Yes. If you had to react to something quickly, uh, uh, something blowing up on the outside of the ship and you have to make repairs or, uh, you know, acting you're on the ground, exploring and somebody's injured and you have to move a doctor to like, yeah, it's just yeah. so awkward. How do you drag somebody that up that long ass ramp and then you got to go to a tiny elevator? to get them up like the biggest elevator of the ship on a Carrick you can't even get to. So well, for more context, right? We like spaceships because we're still going to have to do first person combat on them. We're still going to have to travel on them. We understand it. We just aren't flyboys, right? So if I have to yeah. drag Echo's ass up a ramp because he's lost his legs, which will be dope. And I'm a big dude. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually you'll get prosthetics, which will be cool. So. Yeah, I would be consoling you about that. I'd be like, dude, you lost your legs, but you know it's okay, man, because we're gonna get you some shiny robot legs. <laughs> and you'd be like, probably out of it. You're like, fuck yeah, man. You know, like, <laughs> so here I am dragging you up this ramp. Like, that's not effective. Maybe if they give us something, but then, but then, guess what? I could just go straight through this corridor all the way to the main elevator, where it's a big elevator. Maybe there's like two or three dudes with blown off legs or incapacitated. Who knows? 
and this could be exploration. Maybe we're not even going out and seeking combat. Maybe we just tried to shake hands with a primitive alien race and we got, you know, dumped on with their primitive spears and we're just dying. So, yeah. And we're wearing RSI, like exploration stuff, like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, they don't finish that commercial where the RSI guys come down and land and you see the footprint in the, the moon dust. They don't finish that. Then the rest of the aliens, like, clubbed them to death and stuff, you know, in their, yeah. in their light armor. <laughs> that's what, that's what right. uh, CIG is not telling you. But the point is, how do I get people to that medical bay? Uh, well, we can't now because i got to go up a ramp and then squeeze one or two people at a time in this tiny elevator and push them up. And then they got to walk all the way across the corridor to the medical bay. <sighs> right? So, And no maybe context. we're missing some context, right? Maybe there are, are. there are contexts or things in the spectrum that have been talked about by the developers sure. or their SELs or, 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 you know, inside yeah. star citizens that we've missed that sort of explain that or have it, have an explanation for that. But like, if I'm new to the game, right. If I'm new to the game, I, there is no way that I've poured through spectrum and ISC and, um, you know, uh, uh, all these star citizen lives. Like I have not gone through all this stuff. And there's and no if way I'm looking could. at this. Yeah, there isn't. If There's I'm going coming at this as a new player and I'm looking at something like the Carrick or the Redeemer, I'm like, wait, this doesn't make sense to me. And that's kind of the, the the I have poured through all those. I do watch every Inside Star Citizen and Star Citizen Live, but that's not the point. The point is, is like these things don't make sense to new people. Mm -hmm. They're not efficient. I, I you user experience. The user experience yes. is not efficient for those ships, and it's especially through the scope of you know. Boots ground. on the ground, like boots people on the ground. walking around, like just inefficient. And I would argue this with anyone who's watching: boots on the ground in this game is what really actually matters. Yeah, you can fly around in a spaceship, blow up whatever you want, scan all the data, mine all the ore, X Y Z. You can accomplish a lot, but if you have an organization, a group of players, you're gonna need boots on the ground somewhere on a space station. In a comma ray, in a mining area, you name it, a refinery, you're going to have to protect your assets. And if a couple guys slip past your little turrets, like we do all the time on every single bunker, like who's going to guard that? Are you going to pay some NPCs to get smoked by a couple players? You know, it's it's this thing. It's like you, you need boots on the ground. That's what matters. That's the guys, even if it's not combat, first-person gameplay is everything. If you're flying, you know, a big multi-crew ship and your power goes out, first-person gameplay is going to be what's needed to repair it. You physically have to exit your seat or your bay or your turret, and you have to move about that ship, possibly while it's under attack, and you have to repair that stuff. That's a that's well, a lot force of, reaction is going to yeah, knock you over. If exactly, turns, you don't have you know any I mean? tools so. except the one thing you can do to counter it. Let's give some useful information here. Okay, <laughs> so the one thing, so CIG, you put force reactions in the game. Cool. We don't have any like in-game tools to build that other than an emote. We can we can go at ease, <laughs> at ease. And for some reason, when you're at ease, your character model doesn't feel the effects of force reaction. So you can sit in the cargo bay while the pilot's doing nine G twists and Anakin Skywalker shit, <laughs> and you're just sitting there. That's one way to work around it. So then you're ready to exit the ship when the dropships need it, or you can get up and fix the, be the engineering hero, right? The other thing is crawling. <laughs> so I don't know about you, Echo, but if you need, if your team needed you, would you crawl all the way from the front of a hammerhead to the back to that engine compartment? No. <laughs> you wouldn't? No, no. No, oh, fuck no. I'm not crawling. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but that's one thing you could do, current build of the, of the game, is you can crawl. Sorry. You can you could prone crawl, Again. yeah. No. <laughs> no, I I think it's 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 weird. I'm doing it, but I think that's another aspect of gameplay a lot of people are looking for. So I know CIG is going to fix it. I know they're going to add yeah. stuff, right? But then it's like, what does that look like? What's the context? Like, if we thought about that, does does the retaliator need another gold pass to go through and hat and like actually? create points for us to latch onto or can we build a mechanic called brace where I can just reach out with my hand and grab stuff right who knows we don't know the context and that's what's kind of frustrating 
because yeah. I'm sick of getting knocked on my butt anytime I move about a ship. Like the pilot sneezes and you're like, you're tossed, you're gone. I want to hear. I want to hear from CIG more about my character, right? That's what I want to hear. Yeah. Like we get all the ships, we get, we get, we got it. But I, I guess my my point and the point of this podcast is to ins- like find that portion of the community that is more curious about their character, their individual character, and the, and the effects that the game will have on it. Yes. Versus the ship they're flying, right? And that's what everybody gets excited about. So. My thing is Gib character stuff. Please. Yes. Yeah, we want we Don't want to Gib tell a story. Banu Merchantman, Gib character stuff. Like yeah. I want to know more <laughs> about my character. Yeah, like and, uh, and the effect. I think what we started getting heated in our org yesterday. Yeah, we did. Uh, but we're all we're all great dudes, so it's great. Um and we're gonna play with each other all the time, no matter what. So it's like we were asking the question, did the Argo raft progress gameplay? No. It's a cool ship. A, I own so one. Controversial. I bought one. Yeah. I like it. It's awesome. But like, it's just more cargo and we don't have a cargo. I'm gonna, I've had a night to sleep on this right? yeah. and drink oh, yeah. a bunch of alcohol in between this conversation. <laughs> yeah. So I've thought about it and in a way, yes. And here's here's my explanation behind it. They created a ship. It's a new ship. They created it during an IEE. A bunch of people bought it, and now they have more money to fund the teams that are going to create other things. Yes. So did the did the ship directly in, impact the game? Mm, maybe. Yeah, it, but, you're right. Gained funding, but you know. But- <laughs> you know, it's the whole point of the ship is to be able to unload and yes. load cargo faster than walking one box at a time. Right. Or are putting boxes on a cart and walking that cart off. You know what I mean? Like, yes. So there, there is a context force there. reactions or take it out of the game, you know, until you have, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. That's. I, we have more I, cargo context I, in the game than we do combat yeah. on the ground. at right. least. So that, and, and the focus sense. is and, and, and the good point that was made was like, yo, stop shitting on the vehicle teams. There are other teams at Star Citizen yes. or, or CIG working on the game. And yes, you're right. There and is dude, no reason why the raft could have been. They're not already making a fix to force reactions alongside the raft being created. Right. That right. just could not. Maybe the fix isn't ready yet or it's being tested in QA or, or whatever. But sure. The point is we're willing to give CIG the benefit of the doubt, and we have been for right. years, and we will continue mm-hmm. to do so because we want to see this game come to fruition. Um, and to and Lighter, JK Lighter, if you're out here, we're shouting you out, dude. Thank you for expressing your opinion yesterday. Yes. It opened a huge dialogue. He played devil's advocate for a little bit. Things got heated. We're all good. We love you, Lighter. And Lighter is correct, though. Like, the vehicle team, we have to be happy. The vehicle team has been... Like that pipeline that they got, I don't know all the details about it, but they're churning them out like crazy. Boom, boom, boom. So much so that we're getting surprised by some new ship at, at IAE. Whew. And guess what? I bought it. <laughs> I own it. Yeah. And I own an Argo raft. But when I take a step back, I go, well, mm, mm. I need more context for how I like to play the game. Maybe that's very selfish of me. Oh, it is very selfish, yeah. but isn't that what everybody on Spectrum, when they say Gib ship, is doing? Gib. Like, they're very selfishly wanting more yes. ships. So, and I think we're just the other voice. We're just hopefully. another voice that's saying, yo, give us character shit. Yeah, give us some give us some tools on the ground like we chatted about last uh, episode. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be able to eat and drink somehow on the ground. I want to do that survival trek. I want to, what does that gameplay look like? Help us, and maybe we can help. With, we'll just keep, keep doing this podcast and we'll keep playing the game and, and, yeah. and conducting PVP and we'll be documenting that for the YouTube channel. We'll be discussing it on the podcast. We'll give yeah. you guys all the tools you need to help your org or however you play. Like we want to do all things first person. We just see there's a missing context. And your voice matters too. So your questions, like the guy from Reddit, strong stronghold, like thank you so much. Yes. More of those, like let us bitch. Give for us you. those, and let us, <laughs> yeah, let us be the assholes on the internet that everybody hates because we're bitching about ground stuff. You know, mm-hmm. um, we'll we'll do that. We'll, I I'm okay. I don't care. Yeah, like I just want Star Citizen. We're to still gonna play it and developed and make you know continue development and, and continue it, but like. Yo, hey, what about us on the ground? Hey, what's up? Yeah, hey, we, I think we're, we're overdue. Ships, you know? Like, I, I I need a compass, goddammit. 
need a compass. Um, and then some more context that I think is missing, uh, just to wrap this topic up, if you want to chime in more echo too, if this is more, more things you need to satiate. Um, I don't understand why we have bombing. I don't understand. Uh, cause we, we just, the point of interest, the reasons to bomb are not there other than maybe taking out some turrets. Well, I think that goes back to what you were saying is like context. Like, yeah, what's the context? Why did there? you create an Apache helicopter when there's, there's no nobody infantry. to use it against? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's, we're building the uh, the combat is being built backwards. Like, or not create. Why did you release it first before you put, you yeah. know, create yeah. it, yeah, make, have... it, make all that cool stuff. But like maybe shuffle, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's being done backwards. Like. You know, we had infantry, we had, then we had cavalry, then we had mechanized warfare with like catapults and trebuchets. Why? Because they filled a need to support the infantry. And if you talk to anybody in the Marine Corps, it's still structured that way. They tell you at boot camp in the Marine Corps, uh, everything revolves around the fight, the infantrymen. The 0311 in the United States Marine Corps is the only unit that it does not support another unit. Uh, the only MOS that does not, every MOS in the United States Marine Corps supports, and I mean every single MOS mm. supports the 0311. Yes. And yeah. uh, I'm talking to you, all you fucking staff sergeants out there. Nobody cares about your MOS. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. You support the 0311. Yeah, you support. And I'm not even 0311. I'm a, I'm a 21. Well, that's what 21s do, dude. They, re- they support the 0311. You're doing exactly. reconnaissance for whom? I'm a pogue. Yeah, well, you were doing right. reconnaissance for whom, right? The grunt. for the infantry, for the, the 11s, infantry, yeah. for the door kickers. The yeah, guys you work for me. Doing it. You work for me, dude. <laughs> yeah, easy there, bud. <laughs> easy. No, it's uh, it's the exact concept. And so it's like, why? Uh, what is this A two Hercules for? Right. We don't know. <laughs> like, who's who's out there? Who needs bombs? The bomb Nova drop. tanks that takes two rockets to kill right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. That'll come online. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, sure. I agree with you, but like, oh, it's, it's on the, it's on the roadmap. <laughs> it's on the roadmap. As Jared likes, to, Jared likes to say, eh, check the roadmap. Yeah. Okay. And so I think as, as a, as a star citizen community, we can be excited about ships. Just don't get hooked on the drug. Okay. Yeah. You know, cause everyone's sitting here, even me, that's why I bought a, an Argo raft. I was like intravenously injecting new ship. I'm like, yeah, new ship. Ah, feels so good. And then I lay back in the chair. <laughs> and then here I am regressing, burning all my ships and buying a Valkyrie. Like a ship that sucks so bad right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. The context of like the Valkyrie even. it was, Like you could tell whoever, whatever their context was, doesn't line up with ours. So maybe we're a bit pretentious for saying, hey, you should align to our con-. But we actually did the job. I don't feel pretentious. Yeah, no, don't, exactly. I, I don't. There's plenty of content creators out there that are, are going to, to be the voice for people who want ships. Yes. We're the voice for people who want ships, but ground or functionality. content ground function in the game. And yeah. let, like why I, I don't see why those two can't subsist and why we both can't be assholes about our own things. Yeah, right? let's let's continue. Let's double down on that. We'll just be we'll be the assholes pertaining to all things ground combat and FPS. But we'll we'll be the shield. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the, the Valkyrie it sucks, but we still love that ship because of the multi crew and team gameplay you can do in it. But they originally put the Valkyrie out. It didn't even have a goddamn cargo grid. Because the military right. doesn't need to transport cargo. You don't need more medical supplies, more bullets or armor or, you know, whatever you can think of. Nobody. Bullets mil- beats band-aids, baby. You just need stuff with wheels on it and go get them, tiger. <laughs> yeah. No, we need. You and need again, th- I think that's the frustration for us is that I, I don't think that there is somebody. Well, well, there is. There are FPS teams. There's a whole column of FPS play, right? Like, or FP play, sure. first person play but it just they don't get enough love man like they don't get enough I'm, love i'm rooting for the fps guys and like love I love you john crew and vehicle team you guys are awesome but give me some more fps guys i can't even remember i can't even remember the fps guys uh like the pillar leaders yeah. name and then also but i know john crew you yeah john I mean? crew who else uh john crew john, crew. john crew's like on every episode every john week. crew john crew starring everybody john talks crew. about john crew. All the time. yeah so john crew and jared we we want the FPS team to get more love, and also maybe maybe hire some people who have a little bit more ground combat experience in real life. Like, 
you know, talk to people. It doesn't have to be us. We'd love the job. No, def- but like we're idiots. Let us, us get some consulting done. Like, what what is uh, what is ground warfare going to look like in the future? You know, then- I can, I'm going to call them out. Uh, Space Tomato does uh, podcasts as well, and I watch his stuff. Yeah, uh, awesome content. So, uh, and he covers a lot of different things, and I appreciate that. It does. Um, and I can't remember the two individuals that were on this particular podcast, but in one of the episodes, one of the guys had talked about they had gotten together with military guys. Like, and this is a content creator, not a developer, but they had gotten together with military guys and they had discussed the different ships that were in the game, right? Again, ship focused, but I need they to were still this. pulling. Yeah, I'll, I'll we'll link. Let's like, link maybe it. We'll, I don't know. We'll, yeah, we'll link sure. it. We'll link it down. I'll find the episode and we'll link it in the description. You can go, well, I, it's an hour long. It's worth, it's worth the watch. They talk about a lot of stuff, but anyways, they didn't go much into detail about it, but basically they were just talking to military guys and about, Hey, do these ships make sense to you? Right. And I don't know what the result is. I maybe have to go to that dude's channel and, and see what the results are, or maybe it's something internal to their organization. Yep. But I thought that that was cool that there was a content creator that was reaching out to do some military experience and going, Hey, does it make sense? Like, <laughs> Yeah. I obviously don't have enough knowledge and this just makes sense. Like I'm super pumped about it, but it doesn't make sense. So yes. I appreciate that the community is doing that. And I think that's kind of what pushed us yeah. to do it too. Right. Like, well, ho- hold on. We, we don't, yeah. we, we look like idiots. We can, you know, we can, I could sit in front of a camera and talk for yeah. an hour. And I hope we don't, we don't know all everything that's going on. We're not, we don't work there. We're not, we don't not qualified at all. We just hope we can influence that because we do have a lot of experience between the two of us uh, right. in being a guy on the ground with a rifle. And yeah. there's a lot of disconnect and there's a lot of missing context in Star Citizen for that aspect right now. Doesn't mean it won't Agreed. change. And I hope it does. But like that's everything is first person. If you need to fix your ship, it's all first person. If you need to fly your ship, you got to walk there. You're still first person. You're experiencing that cockpit from the first person thing so the, you're interacting with yes. the cockpit first person we're not like, a you're not playing the as ship, a ship doesn't do anything but transport you exactly it's a craft it, you're not an elite dangerous you are the ship right right um you are the srv that drops out of there and can go run around like in you know even other games uh they do that a lot uh, what's the other one is elite dangerous uh uh <laughs> doesn't matter but um in the you know boy, what we're talking you yeah. know what we're talking about come you, on you i'm know, sure you're in the comments already talking you about know it. all the space stuff <laughs> but uh yeah eve online you dumbass eve eve yeah, thank you, you got it <laughs> yep yeah you play as a spaceship you are not a human i mean you can go walk around some common areas in, a, in an avatar but gameplay you are a spaceship um and that's not what star citizen is so we should probably nurture that aspect of the game too. And that's all. I don't know. Did we miss anything, Echo? No, I think we nailed it more so than I think we probably should have. Yeah. <laughs> we beat that dead horse and we'll probably beat it again. It's a dead horse. Because yeah. the dead horses are fun to punch. Is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now, we just love the game, man. Disclaimer, we don't punch dead horses. No. Easy. I don't even we own. Don't. I don't even own a horse. <laughs> no. It's like it's probably harder to own a horse than like a car these days worldwide. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, where's our horses at Star Citizen? What the hell? <laughs> okay, don't get I don't <laughs> Holy cow. We just opened uh, a can of worms. Yep. On the next episode of Stuck in the Nail. <laughs> hey Mal, are you still horses? Mal, are you still around? How long have we gone for? What's our time? Two hours and ten minutes. Yeah, about two hours. Yep. Oh hell yeah! Okay, so we we hit logistics, pitfalls, some mill sims, one for one. Dude, we were effective today, but we went long because there's a lot to talk about. Um, so again, uh, yeah, join us, Branders Privateers, www.brandersprivateers. You'll see it down there. Um, you know, we should probably put our Discord links and our Gilded links in there as well. We hang out in both. We find them both useful at the moment. Um, but grudgingly, we do we do like Gilded more. And we're going to be posting on Spectrum. Or we're going to be posting on Reddit. So stay tuned. We're going to have all the social meds. <laughs> social meds for days. Yeah. TikTok, Instagram, anywhere where there's a Star Citizen following, we're going to be posting in. And if you guys could do us a favor, leave your honest opinion in comments here. Let us know what we can work on. And spread the love, man. What well, Echo, what yeah. else you got? 
Yeah, sure. So I would say thanks to everybody for the overwhelming uh, positivity on the first episode. Uh, I was personally like pumped to record today for for this next episode because because of that, the community was like, "Yo, this is yes, please." So more of this. So we're doing it. We're here. We are. We're we're here for you. And uh, I think we should make our own slogan here when we sign off, and we'll say, "Oh, and we'll see you on the ground." <laughs> I don't want to see you in the it. verse, because if I see you in the verse, I'm probably looking through a porthole window. I'm not in the pilot chair. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I want to see you on the ground. I want to see you on the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for us. Thanks for walking. And again, this is Stuck in the Nail. You guys have an excellent day. <laughs>